Welcome in, welcome in. Maureen, God bless you, welcome in. Colette McKinsey, God bless you. Michael Munnings. Yule Seminary, God bless you, man of God. Jane Walks, God bless you. Shanicia Golden. Hi, everybody, how you doing? Melvin Rowe, God bless you, welcome in. Anita D. Rogers, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Gillian Gia Curry, praise the Lord, praise the Lord for you. Hallelujah. Yes, God bless you, O'Brien Knowles. <laughs> we ask that you just invite some people in, you share, um, and uh, just spread the word. Amen? Spread the word. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be talking about the baby that you're carrying. My God, the baby that you're carrying. <laughs> the baby that you're carrying. Father, I cover everybody. Hi, dear. How are you doing? I cover everybody in the sound of my voice, and I bless God for them. I ask that God, you would just cover everyone on this broadcast today. And God, we ask that your word would be uh, spoken, that someone would be delivered, set free today in the name of Jesus. I, I bless God for Chantel, Zelly. God bless you guys. Welcome in. Welcome in. Amen. Amen. We have uh, uh, some grounds covered. Yes, yes, prophet. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. Bless you, man of God. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are pregnant and carrying a baby and don't even know it. My God, some of you are pregnant and carrying a baby and don't even know it. Amen. And so we want to discuss that today. Let's read some scriptures. We'll begin at first at uh, first Samuel, and uh, we'll we'll start at the first chapter, first verse. I said, there was a certain man named Ramathian, Ramathian, a Supite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose, whose name was Elkaniah, son of Jerohim, the son of Elu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zup, and Ephraim. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, and the other called Penina. Penina had children, but, but Hannah had none. Hannah had none. And so year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hopni and Phineas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever they came for Elkanai to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Penina, and to all his sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her. Let's stop right there. In order right, to irritate right. her. Many people are being under attack and you're being provoked by your adversary. Many people are being uh, uh, looked down upon and fought because of your adversary. Many people are coming against you because there is something you're about to birth. There is something you're about to unleash. That's why there's a battle against your life. That's why the breakthrough hasn't come just yet. Because there are some people that are, are making fun of the fact that you've not birthed your process yet. Amen? But can I tell you that many of you are in contractions. Amen? Many of you are contracting in the spirit and don't even know it. Can you guys hear me? Are you guys able to hear me? Everybody hear me? Okay, can you hear me now? The volume low. Okay. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Is that better? Okay, no, it's back. Okay, okay, it's, it's back. Okay, great, 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 great. Praise God, praise God. That's better? All right, all right, excellent, excellent. I'll talk a little louder. 
you must realize that this is why your rivals or people will fight you on a job. That's why sometimes you'll be fought on your job. That's why you'll be fought in your homes. The Panina could be your cousin, it could be your uncle, it could be a rival, it could be someone who is even living with you. Your Panina could actually be a mate, a friend. It could actually be a husband or a wife because sometimes the Panina is very close to you. Amen. The Panina is a sign of the adversary. This is a type of the adversary that has been sent to mock you, to mock you and to ridicule you and to show that yes, you serve in this God. Yes, you worship in this God. Yes, you send in your tithes. Yes, you are doing the right thing. But look at me. I'm being blessed every year. And it says she did this every year. It says, it says, uh, um, but to Hannah he gave a double portion. To Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her. And the Lord closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed had his womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year after year. This provoking, this provoking came to the point until she had to weep. There are many people that are being fought until they are weeping. Many people are being fought until you weep and you cry to God and you said, Lord, why? Why am I going through this? Why are you letting this person get the victory over me? Why has this person repaid my kindness for good when I've only, de I've only dealt with them righteously? Why are they talking about me? Why are they saying this about me? Well, can I tell you, it's because they're afraid of the, of, the, of the baby you're carrying in your spiritual womb. They are afraid that this baby is going to come forth, amen, and it's going to bring joy, it's going to bring laughter. And the Jezebels and the Ahabs are afraid of this. They know that there is something coming for you, but they don't want you to know anything. But it, it says, Elkaniah looked at her and said, Why are you weeping? Am I not better than ten sons? Why are you downcast? Why are you downhearted? Am I not better than ten sons? Ten sons? But she... He didn't understand that she was going through a process where she was saying, you know, I am, I feel unfulfilled. I feel barren. And see, barrenness is a curse. Uh, I, I, even in the Old Testament, it was particularly more so because you were known by the children you could bear. Because you didn't know how long you were going to live and you could lose your life. But your heir was was how you kept your posterity, how you, how you took out a family name. And particularly if you were a man-child. If you're a male child, this was considered a blessing. Women too, but it was considered a blessing when the man, male child came. That's why there's a saying that says, may your first child be a male child. That's a, that's a Middle Eastern term because the man or the male child was the one who took the blessings. Amen? That was the one who took the blessings. And so what happened is Penina kept agitating her, kept agitating her. But can I tell you, those who come in against you, those who fight against you, they don't know that they're pushing you to pray, amen? They're pushing you to do some unusual things. And so they'll see you doing unusual things and they wouldn't even understand why you're doing unusual things. Yes. Yes, yes. Your, your breakthrough is, is nearer than you think. But your breakthrough and the bananas that are pushing you, the banana could be another woman who has your husband. The banana could be a woman who has your husband or has the person you're supposed to marry to and she's sending you nasty text messages and she's laughing at you and they're putting graveyard dust at your door and they're sending these things in your dream at night. That banana could be the woman who's messing with your marriage, messing with your business, messing with your finances. That banana could be the one who's irritating you, amen, irritating you till you cry at night. Why, Lord, did this happen to me? Why did my husband leave me? Why does he even want to talk to me? Why does my husband come into the house and just shut up and go in his room and doesn't want to speak to me? What is happening, Lord? Once you've searched yourself and you've found out that there's nothing to do with you, uh, then maybe you should, uh, you should now begin to look at there's a possibility that there's a panina, panina about mocking you, amen, and mocking you, sending you stuff in the... In, in, the, in your text messages, sending you stuff through your Facebook page, mocking you, ridiculing you. 
hot on her friends when they see you, they laugh at you. They're throwing up scorns. They're actually taking photos of you, uh, of them and, and your significant other, and they're sending it to you. And they're telling you, you're never going to get him back. You're never going to get this thing back. You're never going to get your house back. You're never going to get your apartment back. You're never going to get your building back. You're never going to get your ministry back. There are some people that are making fun of you, and they're saying, look at him. Look at them. They don't even know what they're doing. They're only talking about us talk, but they don't even know what they're doing. That's somebody who has a grudge to you, and they are they are in the flesh. Panina represents a fleshy person. They they are they are, they are gifted. They're talented. But can I tell you, your gift, your gift has nothing to do with your fruit. Amen. The gift is what you do. The fruit is who you are. Amen. The fruit of the spirit. Amen. When you see a person is kind. Uh, they're long suffering. They're patient. They're full of joy. They they're easily entreated. Amen. They love. That's the fruit of the Spirit. There are many gifted people. There are many people who could prophesy and speak into your life. But yet you look at the fruit of their life and their life is, is nothing. It says anything else but a man or woman of God. Amen. They have the gift, but they don't have the fruit. Amen. And I want to tell you today, I'm a fruit inspector. Let me see your fruit as well. Amen. And so what happened is these Paninas think they're getting away. <laughs> they think they're getting away. Amen. But you see, the Panina could cause you to cry out. Amen. To the Lord. Your Panina is what's going to cause you to cry out to the Lord. Your penina is what's going to cause you to cry, amen? To the point where people could think you're crazy. And sometimes you've got to do some crazy stuff when you want to get a blessing from the Lord, amen? you got to do some crazy things. And I know how it is when you have to go on a limb, amen? People are telling you this ain't going to work out and you know this is not going to happen for you. you got to tell them, you got to tell them, I trust in the Lord. It might not look like it in the natural. It might not look like it in the physical. But can I tell you, it is going to come to pass. Amen? It is going to come to pass. Just stay with God. As you begin to stay with God, you'll see how God will break the yokes of the adversary. He will cause the enemy to be broken. And he will destroy everything that the enemy has been trying to do. Can I tell you that the Lord is getting ready to bless some of you all. Amen? The Lord is getting ready to open the doors of blessings and prosperity because you're about to birth something wonderful your samuel is coming forth amen your samuel is coming forth your gideon is coming forth your daniel is coming forth amen your elijah is coming forth in this season and god is getting ready to speak to some of y'all amen and god is getting ready to break every chain every chain that the enemy has forged against you i don't care how it looks in the natural i don't care how it looks uh uh in the physical stay with god amen because god is birthing out some prophets in you you're carrying some world shakers in your loins you're carrying some world shakers in your belly amen and i don't care how it looks in the realms of the spirit god said this is it and that's what it is and i don't care if you don't have two pennies to rub together if the Lord said he can bless you tremendously, you're going to be a multi-millionaire. You must walk in that anointing and walk in that awareness and begin to open your mouth and speak the word of the Lord even in the circumstances. And yes, sometimes it looks like it is everything but what the prophecy said or the word of God says. But the word of God will not fail. It will not come back and return to the Lord vo void. The word of the Lord will not return to him void. Amen? And so we see that this is confirmation that the Lord is going to work it out and he's going to do it. And on many occasions... We told people that the Lord is going to move for them and we, we are waiting for the manifestation of the word because we believe God when he spoke those words through us that it was going to come to pass and nothing looked like it was happening. And we told certain individuals that, you know, we only speak the word of God is God who fulfills the word. And so what happened is when they came back at certain times after we've given them the word and they've said, well, you know, this happened, that happened, that didn't happen. When we look again, they say, man, do you know where I'm at? I'm in Dubai. <laughs> The word of the Lord came to pass. I am in Dubai right now, and I, I, I took off. I'm not here. I'm letting you know I'm in Dubai because the Lord told an individual that he's going to bless him and open a door for him in Dubai. Amen? And I, I told him I saw him dressed like a sheik, and I saw him with as a sheik, and I saw the word coming to pass over his life, and I said, they're going to put all this opportunity in your hands. But the Lord said to tell you, do not mess it up. This is another chance he's given you because you squandered the last the last chance he given you, so don't mess this up. And he was he he didn't have two pennies to rub together. He was literally living in a in a spare room or a little house on the side uh, of of his mom. You know, he was things were shooting bad. And and uh, he connected with some people who had given a word to uh, a lady had given a word to many uh, many weeks ago concerning something similar. And I told her about these connections she could meet in Europe and in the Middle East. And do you know? As he began to mention. I didn't even know that he began to mention the word of the Lord to the lady. The, lo the lady just began to scream and she began to shout. And, and uh, they, had a, they had a wonderful meeting and she began to connect him with these people. And long story short, 
is when all was said and done, after all the red tape and the bureaucratic this and the bureaucratic that, he ended up in Dubai, amen, having the time of his life, trusting God, amen. That's how desperate you got to get. You got to get desperate to the point where you will believe the prophet as word. You will take him at his word, amen, and you will say, man of God, if you spoke this, I know it's going to come to pass. Woman of God, I know if you spoke this word, it shall come to pass, amen. And so even certain people, they came to the Bahamas and they were looking for the deliverance, amen, and they left on a shoestring budget. Some of them left where the money, where they had to hustle the money up, amen, they had to hustle the money just to get here because they believed that they were going to get the deliverance, amen, and so they hustled their way and they made, they made the trip here on faith, amen, and the Lord gloriously set them free, and the Lord is in the process of restoring them all. That's why I said, I wonder why a lot of you haven't got your tickets yet for Oh, the thing in Miami for the conference in Miami. If you're serious, you'll begin to get your tickets, uh, West Palm Beach, and that shows me something too. You can't come to the Bahamas. Why have you not gotten your ticket as yet? Why have you not gotten your ticket as yet? That's faith, amen. That's faith. You you operate in faith. Many of you are at that place where you're about to birth something, amen, and you just need that that little push, amen. And so I'm wondering why a lot of you haven't signed up yet. What is stopping you? Why have you not signed up? What is it? What is the excuse when people have hustled their money to get there, amen, to come to the Bahamas on a shoestring budget, amen? Why can't you sign up? Why are you not signing up? Where is your faith, amen? Why are you making excuses to not get your blessing? Why are you not crying out like Hannah? Amen. Hannah cried out. Amen. Hannah cried out. And many people have been changed through the course of our ministry. Amen. And we're saying, why have we not seen you uh, signed up? Why are you not? Uh, why are you not there yet? Why have we not seen that? Amen. Do not wait to the last minute. Sometimes people wait to the last minute. And God bless you if it comes that way. But make sure you be there. Amen. Make sure you come. Amen. To get your deliverance, get your breakthrough, and see God move for you in a special way. Amen. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to move in faith. Amen. If you have the thumb, if you have the hike, if you have to take a boat, a plane, a train, do that and get there because the Lord has something special for you. The Lord loves when you go out on a limb. The Lord loves when you launch out into the deep. The Lord loves when you make a sacrifice. The Lord loves when you provoke the anointing. The Lord loves when you come to him and say, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And that's what God wants out of his servants. Amen. And sometimes we wonder why we're not getting blessed. It's because it's too lackadaisical and we begin to complain every day about the same situation. But are you making the choices? Are you activating your faith? Are you putting works behind your faith? Amen. Are you moving in faith? Amen. And sometimes I ask some of you to testify of what God has done and God has done so much for you and you're afraid to testify that's 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 not that's not allowing God to use you you got to let God use you some of you have got to overcome fear and shyness and God wants to use you amen and some of you've been delivered so much times and God is asking you to share your testimony and many of you don't want to share your testimony and you know what happened you're stopping someone from getting the breakthrough you're stopping someone from getting blessed and so what happened is you got to step out in faith amen and sometimes your blessings is in your obedience when a man of God asks you to do something and it may be in my same simple but there's something prophetically attached to it you got to recognize that even like hannah hannah was someone who cried out to the lord amen cried out to the lord and as she began to cry out to the lord the lord heard her amen because she got so tired of being of being teased and mocked and ridiculed how long how long will you allow your marriage to stay in lodi bar how long how long will you allow the people to work witchcraft on you some of you are your family members some of you is your auntie some of you is your cousin some of you is the people next door that are fighting you amen how long how long will you allow this to go to go on and the lord is using that person that situation that thing to get you to the place where you surrender all and you say lord i need you to come true for me i don't care if they think i'm crazy i don't care if they think i snort on myself i don't care if they see me getting delivered i'm gonna get my breakthrough i'm gonna get set free there's not gonna be the same year after the same year the same old excuses excuses there's a word called excuse itis and many people make those words they say i can't do this i can't do that i can't them. But when they want to do something, they find the money and the time to do it. But yet when it comes to spiritual things, getting their spiritual life in order, getting their spiritual life together, they will say, oh, we can't do it. But you've got to go and show God your shoes because at the end of the day, you will have to look at your own self in the mirror, amen, and God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. Sometimes you might have to come more than once. Sometimes you might have to get many deliverance, amen. Sometimes you might have to take some time to get it done because sometimes it's a process. It's not overnight. And so some people, they want the microwave life. They want things to be instantaneously, and that's it, and that's done. And we want it to be a sound bite, amen. We want it to just be a sound bite, and that's it. But sometimes God takes you through process. God takes you through a season where he's going to develop you, amen. 
So the scripture says, uh, it says at verse 7, this went on year after year. When Abahina went up to the house of the Lord, her rival woke to her till she wept and could not eat. Her husband, Akadiah, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? He was trying to help her in his own way. He was trying to help her in his own way, but he didn't understand. This was deeper than that. Amen? Some people will try their best to help you. They'll try to, uh, to, to, to show you that, listen, I, I, uh, I, I, really, I, I really care about you, but it's something deeper. They're trying their best. Amen? And so what happened is he was trying his best, but he didn't understand. Amen? He didn't understand what she was going through. And he couldn't deliver her. He couldn't deliver her from what she was going through. Amen? And said, it says, once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In deep thought and anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remind me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give, give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. My God, she made a fleece with the Lord. She said, The Lord, she said, The Lord, if you give me a son, if you give me a son, I will make sure that he serves you all the days of his life, and he will not, his head will not touch, no razor will touch his hair. Uh, she, was, she was saying, Basically, I'm going to make him a Nazarite. Amen. I'm going to make him a Nazarite. He's going to be a Nazarite. Amen. And she made a vow to the Lord. When you make a vow to the Lord, you got to honor that. Amen. When you make a vow to a prophet or a man of God, you need to honor that because. Because a lot of times your blessing is tied up into it. And we say, well, oh, people working on us. People doing this to us. No, it's because you made a vow and you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't keep the vow. When you make a vow and you don't keep it, you open yourself up to a lot of satanic abuse and satanic uh, uh, infiltration and satanic punishment. Amen? And, 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 and it's a way for the enemy to afflict your life. And so what happened is when you make that vow, you must keep your vow. Amen? Many people to go and repent the Lord. Lord, I've made vows and I didn't keep them, and that's what opened the door up for the enemy to afflict your life, amen, and so uh, as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her, she was praying to the Lord, Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard, Eli thought she was drunk, even the prophet could mix it, even the prophet and priest could mix it sometimes, he thought she was drunk, and said, how long are you going to stay drunk, put away your wine, not so, my Lord, she answered. Hannah replied, I am a woman who was deeply troubled. I am deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for wicked woman. In other words, don't think I'm crazy because I'm carrying all of this. Don't think I'm crazy because I come all the way from the states and far places just to get my deliverance. Please, do not take me uh, and, and feel that I am crazy because I, I, I leave it all. No, I come because I want to pull on the anointing. I want to pull on, on, on the things of God. Amen. And I need my deliverance. I'm not going to leave here until I get my breakthrough. I'm not going to leave here with this elephant. Amen. I came with this elephant and I'm not going to leave with 10 elephants. Amen. I want to get my breakthrough. I want to be delivered. I want to be set free. I want to be set free, Lord. And so, so she said, I'm in, I'm in anguish. I, I'm not a wicked person. I'm not a bad person. Bad things just happen to me, but I'm not bad. I'm just, I'm just in my grief and my pain and my hurt. I'm crying out to the Lord. I'm saying, Lord, I, I, I need you to move for me. Amen. There's something in my belly, but I just can't birth it. Amen. And he says, I've been, I, and she, and he said, she says, I've been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Out of great anguish and grief is the birthing place for your miracle. Out of great anguish and grief comes the point when you have to go either with the Lord or you drop off. Amen. It's the breaking point. It's the threshold point. It is a point when you reach uh, uh, that place where you said, Lord, either I live or I die. You have to get to the place like Esther where you said, Lord, either I perish or I either I perish or I will perish, but I go into sea. Amen. I either perish or I, I will die. But I, I decree that today is the season where I'm going into the king's uh, the king's council. I'm going into the king's room. I'm going into the king's chamber, amen, and I will get my victory. Either I perish or I will see the king, amen, because I need to see the king. And the Lord, the Lord blessed her, and he said, uh, Eli answered and said, go in peace, and may the Lord of Israel grant you what you have asked him. And, and, and uh, she said, may your servant your eyes. 
Then she went her way and ate something and a face no longer downcast. My God, just one word from the prophet, just one word from the priest, amen? Just one word, and that was it. She was no longer downcast. She was no longer uh, sad, and she was able to eat because she was an eaten in the previous uh, verses that said she was an eaten, and she was sobbing, and she was depressed. And now, after the word of the Lord, she went, and she ate, amen? And she ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. It simply means that she... She was back to her normal self again. She was happy, amen, because the word of the Lord had already been given to her, amen. She knew that she got the answer within her own spirit, amen, even though it wasn't manifested yet. I'm telling you, some of you are so pregnant with your blessing that you don't even recognize it yet. You're so pregnant right now, even though it has not manifested, you have a feeling of being pregnant, amen. There's a pregnancy coming even now. Even now, you're beginning to feel the birth pangs. Your body is beginning to change in the realm of the spirit. There's a shifting taking place. You start to see some things changing and shifting amen there's some there's some birth there's some birth pangs that are coming amen you're starting to feel the birth pangs amen because she already felt it in the spirit amen and it says early the next morning they arose and worshiped the lord worshiped before the lord god and then went back to their home at ramah elkaniah made love to his wife hannah and the lord remembered her so in the course of time hannah became pregnant and gave birth to son she named him Samuel, saying, because I asked of the Lord. It means asked of the Lord. And yes, and the Lord remembered you. Darling, the Lord is going to remember you. Uh, Chantel, the Lord is going to remember you. Rihanna, the Lord is going to remember you. Zelly, the Lord is going to remember you. Moraine, the Lord is going to remember you. And he's going to remember the covenant and the word that went forth over you many years ago. You might have got a prophecy that my husband and I are going to be in ministry and we're going to go around the world and minister to people, but it looks like he wants a divorce. You might be saying, Lord, I want my visas and I want these things to happen and I'm supposed to be going to the States or going to London or England, and yet they are denying you all the time. Yet there is a promise that the Lord will remember you. As you begin to pray, as you begin to fast, as you begin to trust in the Lord, the Lord will remember you. They've spoken about you like a dirty dog. They've talked about you in your face, behind your face, and to your face. And they said, there's nothing good can come out of you. But can I tell you, the Lord will remember you. And the Lord will give you success, amen? Because of the Paninas that have been speaking against you, amen? Because of the Paninas that have been trying to fight your destiny and fight your life. The Lord will give you success. And he will give you the victory over all those that have been fighting against you. Amen? Am I making sense to somebody here today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. When her husband... Elkanai went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow. Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy's wean, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, her husband Elkanai told her. Stay there until you've weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until he was waned. After he was waned, she took the boy with her young. She took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord of Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live. I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for the child and the Lord has granted me uh, what I've asked of him. So now I will give him to the Lord for his whole life and he will be given over to the Lord and he will worship the Lord there. And many of you know the story of Samuel's life. Samuel became one of the greatest prophets of all time. The Lord was with him and not one of his words fell to the ground. Not one of his words fell to the ground and he was known as the last judge. He was known as the last judge of Israel before 
before the kings came because the people said he wanted kings. So I'm telling you right now, your Samuel is being birthed. You are birthing with something. That woman on your job is fighting you. That man on your job is fighting you. They're causing you to cry out to God. They're peniners, amen. They're wicked people. And yet they seem like they're getting away, but they're not getting away because the Lord is getting ready to bless you, amen. He's going to get ready to bless your socks off. And there's no one that can stop it, amen. There's no one that can stop your blessings when it's about to come forth. I decree and declare that you're going to be blessed. I decree and declare that this is the season of your harvest and of your great breakthrough. No one is going to be able to stop you, amen. I decree that this is now the time and season when you're going to be blessed. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what they're saying. You are going to be blessed. And not only are you going to be blessed, but they're going to see that the hand of the Lord is with you. And nobody can stop you, amen. Nobody can stop you. My God, my God, my God. No one can stop you, amen. And there are some very powerful things the Lord has given us in terms of weapon, amen. There are a lot of people I see that are now coming out. They're coming out with all sorts of stuff. And I've been watching, uh, looking at some stuff um, on, on TV. And it was, it was talking about how these drag queens are even going into schools now. And they are ministering to people. My God, drag queens are now going into schools, amen. Dry queens, dry queens are going into schools and they're now ministering to people and they're be, and they're encouraging them about bullying. Can you imagine what is happening now? This is nothing but an, a penina again. That transgender spirit is a spirit that is now being pushed, amen, because it comes from Pan. Pan was a, a demon spirit, amen, a demon spirit that uh, uh, was known as Cush in the Bible. He was also known as Cush, the enlightener, uh, Kunum, amen. These demon gods were also known hello, to be hermaphrodite and so we're seeing the hermaphrodite uh, uh, agenda being pushed amen and they're now telling children you can live alternate lifestyles see what they're doing is they're trying to take away the right to seed of the living god amen they're trying to bring children uh, to, to turn them into homosexuals and lesbian they're pushing the lgbt movement and this is what is happening right now they look like they're winning they look like they're getting ahead but they will reap what they're sowing and they're going in school and there's this uh, uh there's this uh transgender uh known as known as a uh, i think it's tracy Tracy, I think I wrote it down here. Tracy. I think she's known as Tracy Lahore. Tracy Lahore. And she's now going around. It's so lucrative that they can go around now and they can literally, literally make money from this. And they're going to schools and they're teaching the children. And there's a saying in the in, in, in the Bahamas, when America catches a cold, we sneeze, or the other way around. But it's talking about how these people are now coming here there's a movement now that's being pushed amen and it's called the back to witchcraft movement and this is done with wicca amen and a lot of now stars are rapping about it the whole industry is now going back to Wiccan and to witchcraft and this is the system they're pushing on us amen they're pushing the system on us and even now we see that this is another battle that is taking place amen and the Lord is showing us that we need to stop we need to tap in amen we need to tap in and we need to pray amen because it is the believers that are now being assaulted you think they're not coming our way they're coming our way and they're bold and they're bigoty and they're launching they're launching their bullets at us amen and this is what they're doing they are not they're also polinas these are all paninas that are coming in our face. And whenever I see that, my spirit gets really, really agitated. Amen? I get so agitated, I don't know what to do. And so we see the daughters of Oshun. Do you know that there are people now, they're, they're coming out now and they're going back into what they call the native religion that they came from and it's all back to Africa. And they're called the daughters of Oshun. And even more so, I see where uh, a lot of them are now uh, 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 pushing this agenda through the internet amen and they're recruiting people like crazy and this is what's happening right now once we see these things happening saints know that this is going to cause us to to have the either step up our game or what happened is it's going to come to your door there are many people now even in the church that are now starting to say listen i will go to a gay wedding i will go to a gay marriage i will go to someone uh, that's having it. They're having a lot of pastors that say they will marry gay people. And this is a cultural, a cultural de-evolution because there's nothing new. It's simply a come around thing, amen. And it's coming back around, amen. And there are what I call a lot of people that are now mixing their self with these things, amen. They're getting involved in it and they're saying it's okay. As far as I'm concerned, and as far as the word of God says, it says.
says that we are not supposed to partake in these things and the word of God is not, uh, not changed. They said that we need to be inclusive. They need to say we need to stop being uh, so homophobic and they we need to uh, be uh, 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 respectful of diversity. Diversity means that they want to come in your face and they want to push this agenda and because and because you don't allow it, they will call you homophobic, amen? And they'll say, get with the program. This is what's happening, saints. This is how they're doing it right now. They're bringing back the old ways, amen? And this is nothing but pansexual movements. This is homophobic movements of the gay agenda that they're pushing, amen? And gayness, one time ago, you would hide that thing, amen? You would hide that. <laughs> you would hide that and now, there's so bold that when you, when, you, when you say, boy, there's a sissy, he's a fire, they would hide the thing, but now they're coming so bold as to the point where they're coming out, amen? And if you don't believe me, you could do you could do your own research, amen? You could Google it, amen? And now what happened is they're coming to school to mentor children. They're going to mentor children. You think it's not coming to the Bahamas? You think it's not coming globally? I want you to know that America is Babylon. America has forsaken the Lord. America has gone against the Lord. She once was a Christian nation. She once was blessed of the Lord. And it says so, amen, that God blessed her when she was with the Lord. Amen. My God, my God, my God. The Lord blessed her because, because, because she was she was a nation that stood up for righteousness. Amen. And they brought the Quakers over. They brought they brought the Puritans over, and the Puritans came, and they brought with them, uh, uh, they brought with them holiness, amen. It was where we got the holiness movement from, and it was founded on the principles of the Bible. And now, because they've thrown the Bible out of the church and out of the schools, uh, sorry, out of out of the courtrooms, and they've thrown it out basically out of schools, uh, uh, and they've now begun to accept the mark of the Baphomet, amen? The Baphomet and the Pan agenda is what they are doing right now. And so what happened is God is getting ready to judge her. This is the age of judgment, amen? When you see people like Tom Brady, my God, Tom Brady, who won uh, six championship rings for the Patriots, amen? And he'll come on national TV and national uh, social media and tell you, that his wife is a witch and she's a good witch and she's the one who's responsible for his championship. Know that this is what they're doing. They're pushing this agenda. This is Penina coming up in our face. Amen. And saying, where is your God? What are you doing about it? Is there any movement in you? Are you are you mixing with us or are you going to take this? Are you going to take this uh, this torture and this mockery from us? Or are we going to cry out to God for our nation? Are we going to cry out to God? Are we going to fast and pray? Are we going to get the deliverance we need? Because there are a lot of people who are struggling with this very same agenda amen and it is it is because of what is happening right now there's a judgment coming on the nations the nations are being tried and weighed in the balance and they are being found wanting because there's a global movement towards this agenda amen and it, again it's the pan uh, uh it's the pan movement amen it's the pan uh, the demon god pan movement and it is it is really stemming back from nimrod who is known as many different names you know he's known as nebo in uh in 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 uh, 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 Babylon, a man who's called Nebo, and, and other places he were he was known as Tamaz. Not only was he known as Tamaz, but he's also known as Attis. And the Bible talks about him when they were crying for Tamaz, the woman wailing and weeping for Tamaz in the Bible. And so we have to fast and pray. It's coming, saints, and it's coming at our doorsteps. And so God is sounding the alarm. We've got to pray because this is the judgment. That's why you find the spiritual warfare is getting so intense, so intense. Amen. There's fights every night, every night, every night you're praying and fasting and there's still a fight. That's because the intensity of the spiritual warfare, warfare is getting like that because the judgment is coming. Judgment is coming and guess what? Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And so he's judging America because America has turned its back on the Lord. America is now uh, 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 mixing with demons and idols. When you could have a church of Satan come out and tell you that they, are, they want to be legalized in this country and they want the same rights, know that this is something wrong. Many people have been joining the church of Satan. They've been joining these wicked movements. Many of the, of the younger generations have now given themselves over to the same spirit. Amen? And the Lord is saying, as, is it, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. In Matthew 24. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And they will keep on doing the stuff. Amen? Because the days are getting darker and darker and darker and darker. But we are to be the light of the world. We are to be those those lights that are put on a hill and everybody can see them. And this is where they're going to be a great falling away. People think that the people just can leave the church. No, they won't leave the church. They'll be right in the church falling away. They'll be right and they're still living the double lifestyle. They'll be living right and they're still going home and still going into the homosexual lifestyle or gay lifestyle 
or living a life that's that's a double standard, amen. And so God is cleaning up house, amen. And God is bringing order to His children. God is saying in the season, get ready because I'm getting ready to move my children to another level in me. But they've got to come up, amen. And you've got to let the Lord have His way in your life. And if there's any distance in your heart, you need to commit a thing to the Lord, amen. Some of us, we not far away from the Lord in position, but we far away from the Lord in our hearts. One time ago, there was a joy in our heart, but we not we don't have that joy anymore. The joy is gone, amen. And the Lord is saying. Get back to that place where you were in me because something has stolen your heart away from me. Some people, they have problem even reading the word of God. Some people have problem fasting. The minute they decide to fast, it's like they can't fast for nothing in the world. That's because something has you bound, amen? Something is fighting you. And yes, the enemy does fight you in those areas when you when you need to fast and pray. And all of a sudden, there's tremendous hunger. Uh, there's tremendous hunger. And you can't resist the food that's coming at you because he knows the power of prayer and fasting. And God has given us some mighty weapons to fight against the adversary, amen? And these mighty weapons are prayer, amen? Prayer is a tremendous weapon against the adversary. Prayer is a very destructive uh, weapon against the adversary. Prayer is like a nuclear bomb that's being launched against the enemy. And that's what happened in Acts when Paul and Silas begin to pray, amen? They begin to pray, amen? Hallelujah. They begin to pray and they begin to praise the Lord as they were praising the Lord at the midnight hour. My God, you see there's a principle. At the midnight hour, they begin to pray and praise the Lord. Now, Previously, they were, they were beaten. They were beaten and whipped. Amen. They were whipped with cat and nine tails, and then they were thrown in prison. They were told, "Stop preaching in the name of Jesus. Do not use that name. Do not use that name." And that's the name they were preaching, and they were preaching in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they were told, "Do not use that name." And they said, "We can, but preach the name of the Lord." Amen. That's what we took, that's what we called to do, and we're going to preach in that name. And so they threw them in prison. Amen. And after they begin to pray at midnight, amen. As they begin to pray at midnight. They had what they call the jailhouse rock. The very foundation of the prison was rocked. The very foundation of hell was rocked. The very foundation of the second heaven where the enemy is was rocked. Amen? They were, it was rocked. The enemy was rocked uh, because they couldn't understand the praise. That's what the enemy is after. The enemy is after your praise and your faith. Amen? He wants to work that in. That's why they're pushing this, uh, this gay lesbian agenda on the children. They're after the kids as well. They're pushing this agenda. They're pushing, they're pushing living licentious. Why do you think all these programs are coming on right now and they're all showing they're all showing so much fornication and so much adultery and there's gratuitous sex and violence in them they're pushing an agenda they're conditioning our mind they're using predictive programming to get us to the place where we don't pray anymore so we won't have power like paul and silas when you pray you can rock the heavens you can rock the gates of the adversary that's why they don't want you to pray that's why you're being fought in your prayer life they're fighting you in your fasting life because when you fast and pray you can rock the gates of heaven you can rock the gates of hell you can shake the gates and foundation of the heavens amen and you can shake hell and that's why they're fighting in your prayer life that's why they're fighting you in your scripture reading because the enemy doesn't want you to get the image of god in you and so as they're praying what they're praying Paul and Silas, they're praying the mind of Christ. They're praying the words of God. They're praying the thoughts of God. What do you think the word of God is? It's the thoughts of God that you are manifesting in the physical realm. That's why he said, I've given you all authority over all the powers of the adversary. That's why he said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. It's because once you begin to pray the word of God, it does something in the realm of the spirit. That's why they're bringing these Bibles in and they're changing the word subtly. They're changing the word subtly. You see the King James Version? You stick with that. Amen? You could use other, you could use other versions to, to get a better interpretation, but you stick with the King James Version because they're subtly taking out the deity of the living God. They're taking out the, the deity and the power of God and they're turning it around so God doesn't have any power. So the power of Christ and his holy character is not there. They're suddenly taking it out and they're saying we're making you understand it better because we're not living in the uh, the 17th and 14th and 15th and 18th century. It's, it's because they're trying to subtly shift you. Amen. And the Bible says there's going to be any hunger in the land. There's going to be a famine in the land. It's not going to be for food or drink but it's going to be for the word of God. The, the, the word of God is what they're fighting on your life. They're fighting the manifestation of the, of the word of God on your life. These people are crafty. These people are subtle. These people, most of them who are doing this are Satanists. Most of them are doing that. They're Satanists. Most of the people that I'm writing this movie, they are Satanists in Hollywood or, or Hollywood or Hollywood. They know what they're doing, and that's what it means. It means Hollywood. It comes from the it comes from the word Hollywood from the Druid system. The Druids were witch were witches and warlocks that used the Hollywood. They would worship the tree. They would worship the tree. They'd worship. 
Kunam, they worship Kush, they worship the enlightener, Kush the enlightener or the diviner, they worship Nimrod, they, it's really Nimrod all over again, they will worship Sununus and Kununus, they will worship these gods, amen, and so this is the wild horn one, this is the wild one, and horn always represents leadership, horn always represents authority, and that's why they said Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord in Genesis 10, they were talking about Nimrod who was a mighty hunter in the face of the Lord, and yes he was, he was, uh, uh, he was a Kush, Kush son, and he was also uh, the great, I think, the great grandson of Noah. He was the great great grandson of Noah, I think. Amen. And he was also Ham's great grandson too, as well. And so he came from the Bible, but yet he worshipped these things. He made covenants with devils, and they would give him power. Amen. And so they're talking about him. He's known as Asa. He's known as as uh, uh, and Isis is known as Aset. They were worshiping him, and that's what Hollywood is based on. It's based on Osa and Oset. And this is what they're doing. They're now promoting the same thing all over again. This is the same agenda. Even the Statue of Liberty is is known as Astarte, Astarte or Libertas or Minerva, Minerva, and so they're pushing this again, and so the Hollywood is what they use, and the cast, what they use is the cast a spell, that's what they call it casting, they were casting a spell on you, they would cast a spell, and, and, and the spell was the words, the words was the script that the, the script writers write, and you think, the, you think the producers have the power? No, the producers don't have the power, they have power, but not as much as the script writers, the script writers are in tune with demons, they are in tune with the spiritual world and they are in tune with the cult. The script writers are the ones that control Hollywood because they write the script. The script is a spell. That's why it's Hollywood and that's why the casting couch is so evil. That's why so many women who are now acting, they have to become prostitutes, basically high paid prostitutes that will sell their body to get a part in a movie, to sell their soul to get a part in a movie. And this is what we're talking about when we talk about about these things coming to us and so what happened is the Lord is now in this season getting ready to shake the foundations of the world because the paninas of the world has been uh, fighting you the paninas of the world has been coming against you they will be destroyed amen they will be destroyed because the Lord is releasing knowledge to his people and is opening our eyes that's why a lot of them uh, don't want them to, to do with us because they hate the Christians amen and that's why a lot of these movies they're making fun and mockery of the resurrection power of Christ in us, amen. And they're they're doing it subtly. But if you watch the movies, and I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be decoding a lot of these movies and breaking them down for you, so you will see exactly what they're doing, amen. And once your eyes are open, you will be able to see and understand that this is where they're going. Many people don't get their promotion right away because they don't understand my God, that the person who saw you saw the light of God around you. You'll say, well, how do they see that? They know who you are. And so they will give the promotion to someone else. My God, you say, well, I overqualified. I, as a matter of fact, I could be doing your position right now. Yet you take my position. You take the job loss for me and give it to a person who isn't even qualified. No way. And you're paying them 10 times the amount of my, that I'm making. That's because they saw the glory of God upon your life. That's because they, say, they saw the favor of God upon your life. That's because they saw the wisdom of God upon your life. And you say, Lord, why am I have to fight for everything that I want in this life? And the Lord is showing that it's because of what you're carrying in you, amen? It's because you're carrying the power of God in you, amen? And the enemy is angry that you're coming into your own fullness. And so he will try to give you half breakthroughs. He'll try to give you marginalization. You're supposed to get the head teacher position. They give you, they give you a nine grade position. <laughs> Amen. Because those who are in the know, they know the hand signals, they know the sigils, they know the signs, they know the Manakanuri hand sign, they know how to tell them what they want to hear, and so they open the door for them. And so they keep you there because they see the light of Christ upon you. And so they don't want nothing to do with you and they keep you right in that position. And every day you come into that job, you fight going home, you fight coming to the job, you fight in your house. And um, there's there's a recent thing. Um, on TV where these people were going and burning down churches now and, and when they wasn't burning down the churches they were following the people who go to the church and come into their house and vandalizing their house they were vandalizing their homes they were putting these evil uh, satanic signs on their house they were marking them when you see them do stuff like that they are marking you they're targeting you you're a targeted individual because why the coming of the Lord is nigh and so what happens they begin to paint uh, paint upside down crosses they begin to paint the a sign which stands for anarchy anarchy and they were following the people home and it was on eyewitness news they had it on the eyewitness news and they were they were saying they caught the people who were doing it they caught two it was a 54 year old woman and her daughter who were in a local coven they were going around uh, to churches various churches and they were uh, the, they were vandalizing the churches and they were putting we hate your God and get out of town and God is not the real God and they and they worship Satan and hail Baphomet and 
Hail, the, the Prince of Darkness. They were doing these things because they want to desecrate. They want to desecrate the house of God. They want to desecrate the house of God because they see the light. Many times it's because they can't do what they want to do because the, the believers are holding them back because of the presence of God that is there. Many of them are now hidden. They're hidden in plain sight, but they're coming out. They're being provoked. They're being provoked. Amen. They're being provoked and they're coming out. Amen. They're showing who they really are. Some of them are coming into churches and some of them, uh, sorry, some of them are coming into churches. That's right. But some of them are coming into schools and they're teaching your children secretly, secretly. That's how you got to know. There was a situation where uh, this woman saw her children. They were, they were A students. They were A students. They were A students. They were uh, really at the top of the list. And when a certain teacher came to the school, several months after that, they began to lose their grades and they became so dumb that uh, the, the, uh, the principal wanted to know, uh, you know, what happened? You know, were you were, were these students? Were you doing the homework for them, or were you doing the the work? Because they they are basically, you know, they they fail in everything they're doing now. And at one when one at one point in time, they were top students. The woman recognized that she was in spiritual warfare. She recognized that this was not normal. She recognized that her children were brilliant. She recognized there was an attack. And as she began to pray and go in her prayer closet and begin to seek the Lord, the Lord revealed to her that it was the teacher there. So she went to him and said, I know what you're up to. I know what you're doing. And he says, you do? How do you, how do you know? He says, don't play with me. Don't mess with me. You better lose my children. She said, I didn't know that you know. I'm sorry. How could you find out? Nobody can tell. He said, yes, we, 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 uh, I am in a cult. I am in a secret society. And yes, we saw the star of your children. We saw the brightness of them. And my, my, uh, my, my group, we began to, uh, to mess with them. We began to tie them up and mess with their minds. She said, I'm not the one. And my kids are not the one. I'll expose you. And indeed, she did expose them because that's what he was doing. They come there and they see who you are. Don't you think when you're on the job, they see who you are? Don't you think when you... I go to uh, area they see who you are. They know who you are. Your neighbors know who you are. The neighbors who you think sometimes are the ones who are upright citizens. They're upright citizens to you in the in the in the public eyesight. But guess what? In 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 the, in the secrets of the night, they worship the Baphomet. They have another altar they worship. Just like in the Bible, there were men who were worshiping in Ezekiel. They were worshiping. They were worshiping Tamaz. They were worshiping Tamaz in secret place. Amen. They had a secret altar within. Within the within the sanctuary of the Lord, Amen. And they were worshiping evil spirits. They were worshiping demon gods, and they were calling upon these demon gods because they said the Lord doesn't hear us. The Lord doesn't know, and so they were calling upon demon gods. And the people of the Lord need to be aware that we are not fighting flesh and blood, Amen. We are fighting spiritual wickedness in high places. These spirits are so wicked, Amen. And they've come to fight us. They want to fight our lives because they see the light upon us, and and that's why they attack your prayer life. That's why sometimes your prayer life can't uh, it can't. To, be, to, to take off, you feel like you're you're hitting a, a ceiling, like a like a, a, a glass ceiling, like you can't break through, you can't break it. You're being resisted, you're being resisted and fought in the realms of the spirit, amen. And that's what the enemy is trying to do. There was a lady who came to our service, and we were praying for her, and and she said, you know what? Say the place where I'm living in. It was once owned by some women who were in the cult. They had they used to have their witchcraft serv uh, service right in this place. I said, what? She said, yes, but you know, the church bought it uh, when it was up for sale and said, now they're back in the area and they're fighting me every night. Every night people are coming in the roof and they're having sex in the roof. Every night they're, they're messing with me. Amen. They're messing with me every night uh, and they're coming to me. Amen. And what happened is uh, she said, she said, this was used uh, as a as a witchcraft coven right in a house in a very beautiful suburb right here in Grand Bahama. And when we prayed for her, we began to rebuke the force. And it was like, it was like the thing had us so bound and so gagged, amen? Uh, we had to sit her down for season. We had to sit her down and minister to everybody else because it was like she was so, I, I, I don't know, it was like it was, a, it was a spirit of hardness upon her. And the thing that fought her so much. And I think what happened is sometimes when you, they're being fought so much, they begin to put their hands in it. They begin to go and they begin to tap it. They call themselves. They begin to start try fighting uh, fire with fire. They try to you know, say, you know what, I tired of this now. It looks like God. Take it too long. I'm going to go into the cult and I'm going to and just use it to fight them. And no, that's not how it's going to work. What you're going to do is you're going to open yourself up to more spirits. Amen. Here's the here's the command what God gave in Genesis one: Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, 
and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. This is what God gave us, the dominion and the authority over all these creatures, amen, and everything. We are told to subdue it, amen. Wow. They will worship another God and they burn incense. Wow. My God, my God, my God. That's powerful, Rishilio. My God. That's what's going on. A lot of people don't understand it. The neighbor next door, you don't know he's a, he could be a warlock. <laughs> and the Lord, unless the Lord reveal it to you. Remember, the thing about the cult is it's hidden. The thing about the cult is hidden. Some of you, your wife could be a witch. Your husband could be a warlock and you don't even know it. There's a situation where a man got married, uh, this woman got married to, to a guy. And she was telling me the story. She, she told me the story. She said, you know, a woman, and I believe she was talking about her, but she uses a story. She said, uh, you know, there's a lady who got married to a guy, and, and uh, he married her, but he told her, you know, listen, you know, on a certain day, you can't follow me. <laughs> you know, I think it was every Friday. And those are some of you who might know about the story, because I think I've told it before in one of my, one of my uh, teaching, teaching uh, episodes. And, and she began to be suspicious, you know, after a while. And so uh, one day, she decided to follow him, and she followed him to an area, um, it looked like bush, but when she got in there, it was a clearing, and he was talking to the moon, and he was dressed, he was naked, he was stripped down naked, and he was talking to the moon, and then he saw when uh, he heard, she couldn't see nothing, but she saw the moon, and it was like, almost like daylight, where he was, and he was doing all these gyrations, and he was, he was drenching all this liquid, like he had all this stuff on him, and when she, <clears throat> when she, bowed down and tried to hide herself, there was a sudden movement and when he looked, when she looked, he was there. And he said, did I tell you not to follow me? And that's the only thing I asked you not to do, to follow me here. And, and uh, uh, because of that, I think they got divorced. They got divorced. But she found out that he was worshipping a demon goddess and he was calling out names of people and cursing the area where he was at. He was cursing the area. There are some people that you don't even know about that are cursing the area because they've been given orders to curse the area. Just like the woman was given orders to go and vandalize and destroy those church and to put those things on. That's what they do. Sometimes they'll come and mark your place. Sometimes there are markings on the place. This man bought a house and he didn't even know the house was, uh, was uh, cursed and hexed. Uh, tell he was painting it and as he began to paint uh, move the paint from the house he found these old markings and even some stuff to ward off evil spirits and to ward off demonic spirits and, and to ward off demons but there were also curses there that were hidden under fresh coat of paint there are places that can be haunted it could be your house it could be your home it could be where you're living it could be uh, it could be the area you're at and you're wondering why you can't get a breakthrough some areas are cursed saints my god are you getting this guys It is my prayer that the Holy Ghost will begin to keep you and preserve you from every distraction and from every interference of the adversary, amen? And God will give you divine concentration. Some people can't concentrate for 30 minutes. They like they have ADT, what we call bird brains. It's like you can't even concentrate and focus on simple things. It's because the, it's because the enemy has drawn a battle plan against your mind. There's a battle plan against your mind. You can't even focus for 15 minutes. My God, and a battle has been drawn against your mind. And that's where they're fighting you. They're fighting you from the second heavens against your mind. And we can discuss it in a second. Amen? And the scripture says in Genesis 3 and 15, And I will put enmity between you and the woman and your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This was the battle plan that has happened from the garden. Amen? And what happened? is the enemy and the adversary knew that the, 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 uh, that the seed of the woman is coming to bruise his head. That's what it's all about. He knows this is coming. That's why he began to let the watchers begin to breed. Amen. The watchers that were, that were in Enoch and the watchers that were in Genesis, even in Genesis 6. Amen. They begin to breed. Uh, 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 it, was a, it, was a, it was an attempt to stop the Son of Man coming because if he polluted the whole gene pool, the genes of the, of the Messiah couldn't come through because he was sinless and he would be defiled. Amen. So he had to redo it. And so the Lord had to redo it. God had to destroy all flesh from off the face of the earth. Amen. And so he had to do it because he only found one person that had a perfect gene. That doesn't mean he was perfect in all his ways. It means that his gene was uncorrupted with the Nephilim 
jane with the watchers jane with the satanic jane with the benny elohim james amen and that's what they did the monokanuri james and that's what they did they were doing this as a result to bring forth po uh, pollution on the earth amen and that's why nimrod was so angry with he was angry because of the flood and he began to take uh, he began to take anger and it says that he builds these cities he built babylon the most wicked city on the face of the earth he built uruk Uruk. And he built the Chaldeans and the Syrian. It was him. He built these things, amen. And he was the father of a lot of these witchcraft society. And it was mystery Babylon that has been fighting us ever since, amen. And a lot of times people don't understand it's a concentration problem because there's something attacking your mind. There's something fighting you. And there's a lot of ways that they can come in. And we're going to discuss how they come in and what gives them the legal right to do it. And it's also because sometimes... And in Joshua, when we read about how uh, Joshua had just destroyed the city of Jericho, the walls of Jericho, God had just given them a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, victory. Amen. That was a, a supernatural victory because based on natural circumstances, you couldn't defeat Jericho. Jericho could have five cars driving side to side on the walls and not touch each other. That's how large Jericho was. Worse. They would never been defeated. And yet the Lord said to get over to Jordan, they had to go through Jericho. Amen. And the Lord gave them specific instructions to walk around it seven times and to put the priests and, the, and those that blow the shofar or the horns. And after they did it, the wall fell. Amen. And so because of they had this tremendous victory, they were told not to touch nothing from Jericho. Do not touch nothing from Jericho. Do not take nothing. The Lord had instructed them not to touch the accursed thing. Obey the commandments of the Lord. And that's why people are getting in trouble with the Lord. They're touching the accursed thing. And sometimes the accursed thing is that I go back in the relationship. I'm not supposed to go back in. God delivered you out of that relationship and you go right back to that relationship. God delivered you from these people you go right back to these people. God delivered you from these family members that keep fighting you and keep fighting your destiny. You go right back to them. And the Lord delivered you and you've taken up the cursed thing and so you open yourself back up to the curse the lord said don't mess with this person stop sleeping with this person stay away from this person you go right back to it and what happened is now the cursed thing is with you you've opened yourself up to the cursed thing and because of that joshua sent about three thousand men out to ai they just come with this tremendous victory mind you the cursed thing is there but the lord is not saying nothing the Lord has not said nothing, so they prepared for war. They just high, you know, they high of this victory, of the supernatural victory, and all the nations are fearing them because they're hearing about these mighty men who God fights and the Ark of the Covenant they're carrying with them, and wherever they go, they're feeding all the enemies before them. And so now they're going against this little town. They say, you know what? Just send out, just send out a little, a little force. Set up a little force. We can set up a little shock troop and a little shock troop. You know, nothing light, a light, a light, a light brigade. Amen. We will set up three thousand men. Amen. To go and take the city of AI. They went up there and AI whipped them. I mean, literally chased them. They chased them and whipped them and beat them. And thirty-six of them, mighty, valiant men of God, lost their life. It was simply because of that. And so Joshua tore his clothes off, and all the elders tore their clothes off before God, and they fell down before God, and they put. Uh, ashes and dirt upon themselves and they tore their clothes and they lived uh, they, they, they sought God in the dust uh, from morning until evening and the Lord said the Lord said you know why are you here Joshua said it, it had been better if you left us over the Jordan to bring us over here you see how people go the minute they get in problem they begin to blame God the minute they get in trouble they begin to blame, blame God aren't we all like that look at you do the Lord you do this and the Lord said it is because there's a cursed thing in the camp amen the abomination is in the camp of which I hate there are those of the house of Israel that have taken up the abomination amen of the camp of, of, of Jericho they've taken it they've hidden the, they've hidden the thing in the camp amen and my anger is kindled against them they've taken this accursed thing there's an Achan in the camp Achan is in the camp amen and Achan is causing the people to die amen needlessly there are people that are in the camp that are polluting you there are people in the church that come into your church that are partaking of the evil and accursed thing and they're bringing a curse on the church they're bringing a curse in the mind because they're partaking of the evil and wicked and accursed thing and the Lord anger was kindled against them it's a kindled against them because it was cursed those things were offered to idols the clothing and all the little shrinkage that they took was offered to idols and this caused them to lose great mighty valiant men of God for nothing there are people that are causing you to lose for nothing because they have now begin to partake of the things that are cursed my God My God, 
We are in a global conflict. As I said earlier, the reason why we're seeing so much fighting and so much spiritual warfare is because of what is being pushed on us. And what happened is they're trying to push the agenda where men of God fight men of God. Preachers fighting preachers. Prophets fighting prophets. They're turning the battle against ourselves. Amen. They're fighting us and they're picking with each other and they're causing the fight to happen. They're talking about each other's ministry. They're coming against each other and it's not ought to be sense. Nowhere should you be fighting a man of God. Nowhere should a Christian be taking another Christian to, uh, to court. You should not do that. Uh, but I understand sometimes as the last resort. But you should shouldn't do that because you're going to mama now you're going to babylon for you to get justice from babylon you're going back to the cursed thing to get justice and they're laughing at you look at how people are taking uh pastors taking pastors to court what do you think they're saying about the body of christ that looks so horrible and they're saying you are supposed to be a man of god a woman of god and yet you all are turning on each other and so that's what's happening amen and and because of that the world is saying you know i don't want nothing to do with them because they look at them better than us but I understand and I know that this is the plan of the adversary to make us look like we start raving crazy. Amen. So bullets and arrows are flying. Bullets and arrows are flying. The enemy is trying to penetrate our spiritual realm. The enemy is trying to get us to move out of position. And so what happens is when we begin to see the arrows coming, when we begin to see the trouble coming, when we begin to see the conflict coming, sometimes we get out of position. And the Lord is saying, stay in position. Do not move out of position i know battle is rough i know you haven't seen the breakthrough i know you're being fought but i say stay in position i know this is happening and you, it looks like everything is going contrary it looks like everything is going haywire but i want you to stay in position because i'm getting ready to work a miracle and i don't want you to move and that's how saul got himself in trouble with the lord saul began to look at the people saul began to look at what they were saying saul began to look at and the adversary coming against him and he was trying to sacrifice the thing that Simon was supposed to do and he did that and the, and, and, and the Lord was angry against him because he didn't wait on the Lord he looked at what he was seeing in the natural amen and this caused him to lose a kingdom he was so anointed of God but God said I repent that I made Saul king I repent that I even gave him the chance amen I repent that means I'm so sorry I even gave this man a chance I took him from back with us I took him when he was nothing made him king Look what he do. He's sacrificing uh, 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 to, to uh, uh, doing what um, Saul, um, Samuel was supposed to be doing, and he keeping the king again and taking the sheep. And I told him to kill everyone, man, woman, child, beast. And I told him to kill all everybody because they were a cursed thing. And that's what he did. He did that because he was afraid of man and the people. And he took King Agag and talking about he goes, he goes, he's going he's gonna to negotiate with him. And King Agag, King Agag was one of them who troubled the people. These Philistines troubled the people of God for years and had them in servitude and subjugation and was tormenting them for years and harassing them. And yet he was talking about he's going he gonna to negotiate with this man. And then Samuel said, what is this? I hear the bleeding of goats and the lowing of, of oxen. So what is this going on? I told you, you said you sacrifice. Uh, you kill you destroyed all of them and he said no i kept these ones uh you know for the man and you know the the, the, the cheap that'd be the um the the, the cream of the crop and it was i kept them and and samuel said because of that man this kingdom is taken from you you've been given so much chances and when he took hold of of, of samuel's uh garment and he tore it and he said the kingdom has been torn from you just like that and he says i anointed someone better than you and he's, he's, i've given it to i've given it to him amen but you see what happened god kept him in position for what 46 years 40 odd plus years so many people think they're doing well. They think they're in God's good grace. And they don't know God has already left them a long time ago. Ichabod, the glory of God has departed. The glory of God has left them a long time ago. But because God loved people, he will still, love, he will still allow the building to be up. He will still allow the place of worship to be there because he loved people. But they don't even know they're being replaced in the realms of the spirit. They don't even know they're not qualified anymore. They, have not, they don't even know that they stopped preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. They don't even know that they, they've stopped preaching the things of God. They don't even know that God has left them because they're preaching prosperity gospel they're preaching lighthearted things they're not talking about the things of god they're not calling out sin sin they're not calling out the wickedness that people are doing as a matter of fact some of them are hurting you more than outside in the world many people went into the church and that's when they got their hurt they got the worst hurt they've ever happened that have happened to them in their life in the ministry and in the church and i'm not saying people can't have disagreement that will happen but when you tell your your, your pastor this is what's happening to me and this is happening and you and the pastor allow another woman in the church to come and take your husband and not say nothing about it and they hanging out with the with the man or the woman and they're making them the armor bearer they're making them the number one deacon then something is obviously 
completely wrong. They've lost their way. And chances are the pastor is doing his, his dirtiness. And the man who is with him knows his secret. His armor bearer knows his secret. And they're living in that boys club. And they're now, uh, they're now going around uh, uh, doing the, the damage. And so he have a part in crime. When you see that, know that the glory of God is departed. Because if you're a watchman on the wall, you will say, listen, I love you as a brother. And I love you as my armor bearer. And you are my deacon. But now you have to sit down until you correct your house, until your house is in order right now. Because you've been weighed in the balance and found wanting, and I can't have you up here ministering, and ministering to people, and putting your hands, and you're polluted. That's why when some people lay hands on you, you say, well, what happened? Jesus, when you lay hands on me, I come out even worse. That's because they've been living a polluted life, and they come there, and they touch you, and they've been sleeping around, they've been just come out of the witchcraft worker house, they just been getting their dose, they just been getting their God ring, they got their God ring on, and they're wearing it in the church. They've been getting their protection from, from their mothers, so-called mothers, and they now come and lay hands on you. And now, instead of them, instead of you getting the demon out of you, you get 64 more demons because they got a soul tied with a demon and said instead of instead of you getting delivered you get oppressed even more and you said well what happened that's because they are not living right that's why we we make sure that everybody who's with us that that team is prayed up that they're living right they're living holy and if they're not living holy you got to sit down because once you lay hand and you come up to the minister you have to know that you're in the spirit because the same demon that's in the person when we're doing deliverance can come out and attack you as a matter of fact one of the demons told the lady said you don't have no power you don't have no power you don't have no power it told her that because it knew that the person was not living right. And the demon began to call out this person and tell them, listen, you were out here trying to cast me out. Last night you were sleeping with the choir director. My God. You were sleeping with a choir director. You were sleeping with a choir director and you've been doing it for the last past two years. The demon began to talk the man business and the man had to bow out and leave with his tail between his leg in shame because the demon knows what the, you've been doing because a lot of times the demon is the one who promote, uh, who is pushing you to do it and tempt you to do it. And so what happened is he had to leave out there, amen, shame and embarrassed, amen, because he was living uh, a life that was double standard yet he was a leader in the church and the demon said you putting hands on me you coming here saying you rebuking me huh and last night you was you and the choir director sleeping together and you around here putting hands on me and you've been doing it for the past two years that's all you've been doing and yes you've been doing it and, and on top of that on top of that you stealing you steal a lot <laughs> now the demon was smart what the demon was trying to do he was trying to buy himself time he tried to buy himself time so he could he could figure a way how to hide and it put it put it put attention on on one of the leaders in the church and what happened is it did buy some time and the man did have to move out and go out in shame and he was exposed uh, but the demon still got cast out the, the lady got set free amen she got set free but what i'm saying to you is many times there are people there are demons that are in people and if they don't be careful the demon will come into that person because they'll say you know you around here trying to cast you try to cast you try to cast me out of this person i coming into you and they can say that because they know what you've been doing they know what you're up to and they'll come at you now some of them they will attack you anyhow just because they that's what they do they're violent but let them have nothing in you just like the lord said lord and the lord said uh, the evil one coming the wicked one coming but he has nothing in me that means when it says nothing in me that means like just like when you oil on you and you try to touch something and it keeps slipping off you can't grip nothing you ever try to grip someone who oil on them or hold grease on them and they can't touch them and they're just greasy and they're slippery. It's like, it's like that. That's because they couldn't touch them. They couldn't touch me because I have, I, have the, I have the whole arm of God on me. And so what happened is a lot of people come in the house of the Lord and they're not living right. And so they come there and they want to pray for people. And they know they even said, even if you know you messed up, before you come and lay hand on anybody, say, Lord, now you know I was, I was dealing with some things. And I, was, I know I shouldn't have been doing them. And I, I repent. That's why before our deliverance service, we always say, I give you 15, 20 minutes to make sure that you clean here because where we go and we go into the realm of the spirit we go and hide and if you don't be careful you could get yourself in plenty of trouble because what happens is the devil and the demon that attacked to certain people will look for the entrance and the opening in you and if you are not living the way they're going to attack you and so you got to make sure you clear and your hands are clean make sure your hands are clean and you're living right amen particularly when we're doing deliverance because deliverance is very serious and is one of the number one ministry and is yet the most overlooked ministry amen and yet is one of the most powerful ministry because the lord one-third 
or one fourth of his ministry was deliverance. And then he would be preaching one second, then he'd do deliverance the next second, then he back to rebuking them in the next second, then he called them vipers and, and generation of vipers and <laughs> and full of dead man's bone and your 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 home is the, the house of the lizard and the spider. You know if your house is the home of the lizard and the spider, you see what <laughs> You're scorpions and vipers and broods of vipers. My God, the Lord was a real serious rebel, amen, and he called it out. That's why they kill him, because he was calling them out, amen. And so a lot of people, they want to go along, they get along, and they don't want to preach the gospel, and they want to tiptoe around the tulip, and they want to pretend. And so God takes his presence, because now you're preaching a watered-down gospel. You're preaching down a, 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 a preach-me-happy gospel. Yes, there's time for that, amen, because the, the word of God is the good news. It is about uh, 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 bringing you the good news, but it's also about you living a life that's holy. It's about you living a life that's righteous. It's about you living a life that you're right standing with God. That's why you got to check yourself. Because saints, it's so easy to slip into the flesh. It's so easy to slip into the flesh. You won't even know it. Let someone cut in front of you and you'll, just, you'll see just who you are sometimes. You will see, you'll begin to see just who you are. That's why the fruits of the Spirit are so powerful. That's why you can see someone uh, moving a tremendous anointing and ministry and yet go out there and you find them sleeping around. Amen? Because the gifting and the call of God is without repentance. But I want to see your fruit. Amen? I want to see you living a life of holiness and righteousness. I want to see you living a life that's pleasing to God. I am saying that you're going to have your battle and challenges, but uh, but I see people that can move in ministry, but yet they don't want to live right. Amen? They don't want to live right. It's hard for them to live right. It's because of the battle in their mind. It's because of some areas that's not de uh, delivered. Amen? Some areas that have not been set free in my God and so what we seen is we seen that the hierarchy and the structure of the enemy has been fighting people because they organize their militants they're militaristic they are synchronized they're syncopated they move in conjunction they move they move in unity they move in oneness and they are they are they are of one mind they're like the Borgs you ever watch the Borgs on Star Trek that's how they are they're like the Borgs they are trying to absorb you into the collective and they are very very disciplined in what they do and the word disciple comes from the word discipline it means you're disciplined it means you will take your mind your emotions your feelings out of the way and you'll take on the mind of Christ amen and you take on the word of God and you'll study the word of God you'll praise and worship with God and that's why we don't have the victory because we are too double-minded in certain areas amen we need to be single-minded and focus amen and focus on the things of God, amen, and be serious about our deliverance. That's why I say, why haven't a lot of you already signed up for the conference that's coming, amen? I want to see people who are serious, amen? I want you to, to get your deliverance, amen? So you need to go and sign up, amen? We're going to read uh, Colossians, amen? Colossians, beginning at chapter 1, from uh, 16, we're going to be 16 to 17. For by him all things were created that are in heavens and that are on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created through him, for him. My God, my, my God. You understand it? God created the whole structure. They were created for him and through him. And they were made for him. Amen? And, and it says also further on down, uh, in Ephesians, I would look at Ephesians, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against against uh, spiritual uh, we wrestle against principalities and powers against the rulers of the doctors of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places my god we are we are fighting against these wicked beings we are fighting against these spiritual and visible beings they're not they're not physical that's why you shouldn't go after the person that cut you off you shouldn't go after the person who was texting on their phone and they almost ram into you. You shouldn't go after the person who swore in front of you. You shouldn't go after the person who hit you. You should go after the spirit that's motivating them behind the scenes. You should go after the spirit that's blinding their eyes. Do you know how many times I'm on the road and people say I didn't even see you because like my eyes were blinded? That's a spirit that's blinding them. So I have to pray now, Lord, you cover me and protect me as I'm going and remove the skills from their eyes so they will see um, I'm here because the enemy will cause them to have a accident because there's something known as a demonic diary. There's 
is something known as a demonic calendar and a demonic timetable where they will try to write your life. That's why it's so good to start your morning off in prayer. That's why it's so good to be early riser. And I'm writing a book called Demonic Early Risers that you will have to get. Amen? Because these demonic early risers, they've already had you on their calendar. They already had you on their list. Like I said, they could be in your state, they could be in your region, they could be in the town, they could be in the neighborhood, they could be right in your house. And they're up early in the morning programming the heavenly, they're programming the constellation, they're programming the stars to fight you. And so that's why by four, five o'clock in the morning, they already finished doing their work. They're disciplined, they move in one accord, they move syncopated, synchronized, and they're, they're collectively fighting your destiny. And so by the time you wake up eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and you start praying, they already then have the jump. They already then program the elements, and the elements are there to work for them. Amen. That's why the Lord said, I don't want you to worship the stars or the moons or the constellation and bow down to these things. That's what Nimrod did. Nimrod and his wicked minions, Osa on a side or set, worship these Nefertiti <coughs> and, and uh, 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 all these Egyptian people also worship them. Amen. They worship them and net, uh, I think it's, uh, 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 they, they have this, um, this saying, I forget what it is. Uh, 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 Tahuri, sorry, Tahuri, I think. Tahuri, these are all different variations of Heru. Heru and Horus, the, uh, Horus, the falcon head god. They are all a uh, description and a, and, and a name for Nimrod. It's just different uh, association from different countries and different ethnic backgrounds, but it's all the one person they're talking about. And Tahuri, the laws of Tahuri and Ma'at are taught. They are all speaking the same thing, but they're coming from different regions. Amen? And we see even. Uh, Diana, Diane uh, was also the god. She was also known as Minerva as well in the Roman pantheon. And these are all one and Mother Earth, amen. And they see that they're bringing back Kali, Kalima, Kalima. The whole the whole world is uh, coming and paving the way to Kalima. Kalima is also the statue of Libertas, amen. Libertas and Minerva, and also she's known also as uh, uh, as Lilith, Lilith, Lilith. My God, Lilith. And so they want us. They want to put these things right in your your face. Ta right, ta. Yes, they want to put these things. Thank you very much, Alim. They want to put these things right in your face and let you see it right there. And they want to let you see that this is what they're doing. And they want to say hectate or hecatate, hecatate, hecatate. These are all the different goddesses that they're using to fight you, amen. And gods that they're using to fight and to bring you into the season of what I call spiritual oppression spiritual oppression they want to try to break you down amen and so we're looking we're going to look at the order of the principalic uh, uh structure and how we can fight them amen also in daniel uh in daniel 10 and 13 says but the prince of Persia withstood me for 21 days and behold michael one of the chief princes came to help me for i had been left there alone with the prince of persia my god but i will tell what is noted in the scripture this is what is happening right now saints we're being fought amen we're being fought and sometimes it is because we're being resisted we're being resisted we're being resisted we're being resisted in the heavenly it's not that your blessings isn't been released it's been released but you're being fought because there's an earthly there's an earthly connection there's an earthly witch or warlock or a divination person that knows you because they sense the light and the prayers going up they're being told in the heavenlies and in the bottom of the ocean this is the problem right here i want you to target this house so what happens i'm going to fight you uh, they're going to they're going to they're, they're going to fight you in the finances they're going to say okay but what we can do is we can fight them in the finances we're going to fight them in the marriage we're going to, we're going to try to fight them in here fight them here we're going to, we're going to resist them uh, in the in the mortgage pain you can't meet the, the note for your mortgage they won't be able to to make this meet so what happened they can't pray because they're fighting now this battle uh, thank god for his angels because the lord gets wind of what they're saying and he sends the angels down amen uh, uh, and he sends them down to fight but what they could what they're trying to do they're trying to get you to to, to stop uh, doing what you're doing for God, stop praying, stop fasting, stop preaching and teaching, because what they're doing now is they're fighting you in that area where you where you need to have your breakthrough, amen. And so they'll say, see, look at you, you preaching this gospel, teaching this gospel, but yet you don't get no breakthrough in your finances. Yet you can't, yeah, uh, you, you, you still, you still, uh, some of your family members still stick from this because you're preaching on healing. And so they'll try to tell you, you show sure you, you show sure you're on the right path, because what they want to do is they want to break you down, they want to get you off, and they want to make you feel like, oh, you know, God don't hear your prayers no more. That's that's why you don't get an answer. You know, God married you. You said you did something really bad. You sinned against the Holy Spirit. You did an impardonable sin. And now you you can't, you can't. God ain't hearing your prayers. You're praying and nothing happening. You know what? You ain't never 
make it. No, this thing, you ain't gonna never break through. I don't care what them prophets say, look at everybody else. They get their breakthrough, they don't get their, they don't get their breakthrough. Why are you ain't getting yours? So what they're doing is they're trying to break down your system. They're trying to break down your, uh, uh, your, your, your faith in God. Amen? And so what they're doing is they're trying to give you uh, 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 the, uh, the negative faith. They want you to have negative faith. In other words, they want you to believe more in devils and more in the power of Satan. I mean, we've done such tremendous deliverance on people that they said, but the, the person still working on me. I said, what? You just came on this powerful deliverance? You're still wondering oh, but what they put in your yard? God, just move them. But you have more faith in the power of what the enemy is doing and what they're doing that you are so afraid that you have that you have negative faith um, and there's someone always fighting on you we did, we did deliverance on a lady man and oh my god we had to cut her off because she was she got a tremendous deliverance and man everybody saw it she was delivered set free oh my god god has delivered her and yet she gone right back home and started to meditate on what the people doing what the neighbors doing what happened here happened here then she started to call me every second then she started to call me uh, uh, every minute of the day, uh, screaming, hollering that they're working on her, they're doing this on her, they're doing that on her. And we, we came to the point and place and time that we said, you know what, you are now giving the enemy too much credit and you're now uh, letting the enemy use you because of the unbelief. You have so much, they're always working on you, they're always having you on this thing, they're always doing this to you. Yes, we, we see we know about the enemy, we identify the enemy, but we identify the enemy not to big him up, we identify the enemy to know who our enemy is. You got to know who you're fighting. If you don't know who you're fighting, you won't be able to fight them. And then once you've been delivered, you now you need not to go back to that uh, to that thing where the enemy uh, has your mind bound. And so what happened is he will take that and he will he will use that against you because there's a spirit of phobos, phobos, amen, phobos, unfair, and the spirit will use that against you. And so they'll have an open door into your life. And so every time you uh, you try to move forward you can't move forward because the enemy is now fighting you amen and they're keeping you bound from the spirit of fear my god i want you to know that this is the season when god is going to give us the keys to the kingdom amen he's given us keys to the kingdom amen he's given us king keys to the kingdom bless the lord you his angels who excel in strength who do his who, who, who heed his word heeding the voice of his word who do his word who do his word, heeding the voice of the Lord. This is in Psalms 103, 103 and 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. That means that God, God's angels are released by your word. You see the same pink thing in front of you? Release the word of the Lord. He hearkens to his word. He hears his word. When the enemy tells you you ain't going to make it, say, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. When he tells you you curse the Holy Spirit, you need to say, Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. <laughs> you you say, Your mind is working. You can say, What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Devil, you see how. See how Jesus defeated the enemy? He defeated him with the word of God. He defeated him with the word. He said, it is written. It is written, Satan. It is written. It is written. It is written. And so he couldn't do nothing. And he had to depart from him. And he whooped him in the desert. Amen. And he comes at his weakest point. He whooped him in the word. He didn't rely on his strength. Amen. But it was a tremendous battle. And it says he came out of the wilderness in the full power of the spirit. Amen. He came in the full measure of the spirit. That means after he, after he beat him and he whooped him. And in and, 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 uh, and, and, uh, and the mountains, when he went into the mountains and he fasted, after he beat him, my God, uh, 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 came up with power. That means every time you defeat the enemy, you can come up with power. That means you can come up with the spoils of war. Whatever you go against the adversary and you defeat him and whoop him with the word of God, when you begin to use the weapons of praise, amen, and praise and praying, and when you begin to use the preaching word, the teaching words against him, and you begin to whip him, you will come out with more than you left with. Amen. You will come up with the spoils of war. You will recover all as you begin to pass these, uh, these tests that the Lord has put you through. Not that the Lord wants to see what's in you because the Lord already knows what's in you. He wants you to know what's in you. He wants you to know that you have the power. He wants you to know that you are the light of the world. He wants you to know that you are the salt of the earth. He wants you to know that you have the dominion. He wants you to know that you have the authority. And when the Lord said, when the enemy comes to you and say you're weak, 
I am the Lord, and he will be he'll give me all authority over all the powers of the adversary. The Lord told me this, and so I have all the power over all the powers of the adversary. When the enemy comes in and tell you, listen, you ain't going to make it, tell him, say, listen, God is my source and my strength, and I will rely on the Lord, and the Lord is my, is my source and my supply. The Lord is my supply. The Lord will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen? When he tell you, you ain't going to make it, your mortgage get paid, the Lord is my divine supply. The Lord will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I will, I will trust the Lord at all times, his praises will continue to be in my mouth. And you see what Peter and, uh, Peter and Silas was doing? I mean, Paul and Silas was doing? They were praising the Lord. They'd get whooped, they'd get beat. They could say, You know what? I ain't praising the Lord no more. Look how I get beat, look how I get whooped. You know, they wicked me. I had to, I signed up for this. And I got to beat me. They threw me in prison with these, with these people and it's stinking here and it smelled bad in here. Oh, you know what happened? They had a jailhouse rock. They began to praise God at midnight and God began to shake the prison walls. He began to shake the foundation of the prison. Amen. He began to rock the house. They had a jailhouse rock. In there. That's the original jailhouse rock. Their prayers was able to rock the foundation of hell because they didn't want them to preach in the name of the Lord. They didn't want them to call on the name of the Lord. They didn't want them to call Jesus' name anyone. They're not preaching that name no more because the enemy was trying to shut them up because there's calling come on, there's calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why his name is such a powerful weapon. That is the most powerful name in the universe. There's no name like that, and that's what happened. The enemy has been using his affluence to take the name of the Lord Jesus Christ out of, uh, out of the church and out of the mud of the believers, amen? And so we don't have the word of God no more, and the name of the Lord, the name is a strong tower. The name of God is power, and that's why when Peter could say to, uh, to the lame man, <clears throat> get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto you. Get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They knew the power of the name. They know that the name was a a, 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 a a power battery that will knock down the gates of hell it would destroy hell amen and that's why this is, this is what the enemy wanted. The enemy wanted to stop the name of the Lord. That's why he's trying to bring confusion to the name. That's why they're bringing all these false messiah. That's why they're saying there's 33 messiahs before the Lord. They're trying to bring confusion with the name. Amen? The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're bringing, trying to bring confusion because they know the power of that name. They're trying to put doubt in your mind concerning the name of the Lord. They're trying to put doubt in your name so you won't use that name anymore because the name contains the power of the universe. All the power of the Lord Lord is contained in his name. He exalts his word above his name. The word of the Lord and Jesus Christ are powerful weapons against the enemy and they are like ballistic scud missiles in the camp of the enemy. When you get the revelation of the name of the Lord, when you get the revelation of the prayer, of uh, the battering ram prayer, when you get the revelation of what prayer can do as a ballistic missile and as a scud missile against the thought bombs that the enemy sent against you, you will know that this is this quakes them. This quakes them. This caused them to, to, to be shaken. And so they said, you know, we got to go down we got to target so and so because they're, they're setting up too much prayers and are shaking our kingdom is rattling that kingdom and so that's why it says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood we wrestle against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this age of spiritual wickedness in high places my god we're battling against these wicked creatures and they are very, very determined to try to destroy us. Amen? They're determined to destroy the work of the Lord. They're determined to destroy what God is doing in the season. But the Lord is going to give us the victory. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Are you guys enjoying this? Many people are going to be set free just from listening. You're going to be set free just from listening. Amen? And so when the Lord, when the Lord is speaking to us and trying to get our minds to that place where we begin to operate just like him. That's where the enemy fights you. Can you imagine if, if we had a couple million, couple billion little Christ walking around here operating just like just like him? <laughs> the world will be evangelizing the day. That's why you're being fought. That's why you're being fought. Because you're birthing Jesus Christ. You're birthing your spiritual Samuel. You're birthing your spiritual your spiritual heritage. And you're giving birth to something amazing. And that's why your water is burst. That's why you're in contraction. That's why you say, God, get this thing out of me. Because it's now the point where you said, Jesus, get this out of me. And so sometimes you have to induce labor. You have to induce labor by praying all night, praying all day. And you have to get beyond that, that place where you say, Lord, I got to get this breakthrough. I don't care what it takes. You got to give me my breakthrough. I got to get my breakthrough. Now the word principality comes from the word Arachias. Arachias or arch. Arch. These are prince of the underworld 
who manipulates certain situations and certain sectors and sections of the universe. Principalities are ruling spirits over nations and city. Their principality, you ever heard of the principality of, of say, um, say um, uh, Chicago? Chicago is what? Chicago is known for what? Violence. The principality over that, over that spirit is what? The spirit of violence over San Francisco. The principality uh, is known what? That's homosexuality. That's the birthplace. That's, that's where the, they started out. I mean, it's known as, most of the people there in San Francisco is a pretty place, mind you, but they're, they're, they're known as homosexuals and, and they're very uh, open in their thinking. Uh, what about, uh, what's another place? Um, New York. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, let's say the Bahamas. What's the prince of the Bahamas? The prince of the Bahamas is a religious spirit. The principality is a religious spirit. It's a religious demon that's over here. Amen? It's a religious spirit. It is a religious spirit and it fights us in religiosity. We are a Christian nation in name, uh, but we've forgotten God. Amen? A lot of us have turned away from God. And that's why God has blessed us so much because we know the Lord God. We know how to call upon the Lord. We know how to call upon the Lord. We know how to call upon the Lord. Amen? And so these principalities are assigned to city and they're assigned to sectors of the universe and to nations. They are the highest ranking uh, spiritual beings in the satanic hierarchy. They have been delegated and assigned the power to influence the affairs of nations and kingdoms and to resist God's purpose concerning these nations and kingdoms. They resist God's purpose. That's why the prince of Persia, that's where we get the word prince from. Principality comes from the word prince. A prince is someone who rules a region or town. That's where we get the word prince from. Principality is his kingdom. He has the principality or the kingdom of France. And the prince is the prince. But we're not talking about a physical prince. We're talking about a spiritual prince. And yes, he was a prince, but what was he releasing? He was releasing the thought forms, the thought bombs. He was releasing the mindset of the people. He had them in a particular mindset, a mind frame. He had them bound from the thinking process. I mean, he had them bound from the conceptual thinking by the ideology and philosophies of the prince of Persia. They had a demonic philosophy that he had the whole region bound and so the angel Gabriel was coming down to bring a message to Daniel concerning the release of the children of Israel after Jeremiah had prophesied it 70 years ago it was written in the books Daniel saw it. Daniel began to pray it through and he was trying to the prince of Persia was trying to stop Cyrus Cyrus was God's servant who God was going to use Tremendously, even he'd written, I think he'd written it uh, 200 years before Cyrus, either that or f even between 200 and I think 1,000 years, they say some, some say 1,000 years, but I think it was more, more than likely 200, 300 years before he came, and he called him my servant, but yet he was not, he was not, a, he was not of the Jews, he was not of the Jews, but yet he called him my servant, he said he's my servant, but he will free the people of Israel, they had to show him it in the book, Daniel showed it in the book, and so he freed the people but it had to take a battle. It had to take 21 days of fasting. 21 days of fasting. 21 days of fasting. This is the fact that we are, we're in a battle. And so sometimes we have to pray and fast to get the breakthrough. Because if we don't fast and pray, our prayers are being blocked at a certain level. And you say, well, I fasted and nothing happened. That's because you're fasting and praying, but there are still some open doors in your life that you need to close closed down. And that's when you said, Lord, Holy Spirit, begin to reveal to me what are these doors. You said, I've been through deliverance and yet this, the same thing happening over again. That means that you still you don't have some doors that are not closed or you need to go to another deliverance session. There's nothing wrong with going to another deliverance session or getting your deliverance. I mean, some people have to come multiple times until they get full deliverance. But you also have to remain watchful and you also have to remain on God because there's some things that you might have taken into your house that you don't even know. There might be some things in your surrounding that you might not even be aware of. Amen. And some of the ways they're coming through is uh, uh, 
uh, they can come into the sins of the forefathers. We all, we already talked about this. They can come into the sins of the forefathers. They can be broken. It can be a dedication to Satan. Some people were dedicated to the to, to, to Satan as a child, and you might not even notice. And that's what happened to this this person, man. They were dedicated to the enemy, and they wonder why they go through all this hardship, and all this pain, and all this fighting, and they didn't even know it until a prophet really told them that you're dedicated. And he said, man, no, no, I, I, I nobody dedicated me. But the family became Christians. They become Christians, but they were generational Satanists, and they they they, they forgot all about it, and they didn't want to tell him about his past. But it caught up to him anyhow, and he began to experience all these nightmares and horrible back, backward situations and all these terrible circumstances were going on in his life. They didn't tell him till the prophet said, you didn't know it, but as a child, you were dedicated to Satan. But the family got saved, and they, they stopped doing it, but they neglected to tell him, and he became a man. And as a man, he began to experience these tremendous uh, demonic attacks on his life. So some people don't want to tell you what they did to you as a child. There's a saying, pig just turned hog. Many people and many family uh, don't want to tell their offsprings, their siblings, their cousins, their children that they that they dedicated them. They bathed them. They gave them lotions. They gave them potions. They had spiritual baths. They, they uh, dedicated them to altars. They dedicated them to, uh, to Satan as a child. Uh, and and they, they serve other gods that they don't know about. They love the Lord there in church, yet they're wondering why these things come to visit them all the time. There are some people in your family line that have visited these things, and they serve these things. They might have gotten saved. They might have given their life to the Lord. They might have put those things away. But now, they have found that they are now, that the offsprings are now reaping the sour grapes, the, 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 uh, the teeter edge because of the sour grapes of the, of the forefathers of them. Uh, the fathers of Eden, sour grapes, and the children's seed are on edge. That's because they've caught up with you, amen? So it could be ancestral acceptance of curses on the lives of the descendants. Blood could have been spilt in your family line. Blood could have been spilt in your family line. Or you might have, or some of your family members might have murdered someone uh, illegally or killed them uh, 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 without remorse. They, they were mean and they killed someone. And so the blood is on their lands, the blood is in their hands, the blood is on the generation because they did evil and they wickedly murdered people. They might have murdered someone in your house and your house is now under attack, amen, because it's a haunted house, because the blood is still there. Mind you, you don't see the blood because that happened three centuries ago, two centuries ago. It could have happened on the land that you're living. The land that you're living on could have been from your family members, your forefathers, spilling innocent blood. And the blood is coming against them. And now you are reaping what they've sown. And it's now playing out to you. And you've been through deliverance. You've been through this. You've repented. You've renounced certain things. There's still some things operating because it is unknown to you just yet. You're getting there, but the enemy is still playing his hands. Amen? And so this is what we're talking about right now. We're discussing this because we want to break it down. Because this is how the principalic powers operate. Amen? And if we have time, we'll discuss them. If not, we'll just continue part two uh, next week in the word of the Lord. Amen? And so, another way is continuing in the sins of your forefathers. One thing is to know about it. The next thing is to continue in on it. There was a lady that had, had, had uh, offered all of her gr great-grandchildren to Satan. Amen? She dedicated them to Satan right here on this island. Uh, if I call the name, you all know. So, I don't like to call names because people, they could pick up... <laughs> They'll pick up if you just give them a little clues. You're too sharp. So I had to, I had to sometimes hide it. Even when I'm doing a praise report, some people don't want people to know. So I had to kind of make it a roundabout story. Amen? So you wouldn't pick up. Um, but some people still pick up. <laughs> some, some person recently came to me and said, I know you talk about the person that you testify about. Say, I know who they is. <laughs> say, I, I know who they is. Wow. Wow. My God, Chandra. That's deep. Because of that, you know what happened? There is a spirit of violence and murder in that, uh, in that family line. And you'll find out that there's hardship, amen? There's hardship. And you'll find out that there's a spirit of violence uh, that's following them around, amen? Uh, they need to get delivered. They need to set, be set free. And they need to be uh, 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 one who walks closely to the Lord, amen? There's some people in the family line. Nobody in your family line gets married. Or if they get married, they don't stay married. There's some people in your family, everybody goes to jail or been in jail. Or they are murderers in the family. These are people that have now tapped into the continuing sin of your father. You you know what your forefathers did, and you make a joke about it. You say, child, girl, what you worry about? You know you know how all of this family. Why are you trying to even fight that? Every man, every woman in the family, you know you have seven kids. 
And that's it. And that's the way it is. That's how it was with grandma, great grandmas like that. That goes way back. And they see there's a badge. They see there's a badge of honor when it is a badge of shame. When God is saying, This thing come upon you so I can get you to stay away from it. I want you to be the I want you to be the agents of change in your family. I want you to be the stones that have been rejected in the family to break the to break the curse of the family line. And so they said, Yeah, why are you trying to get out of this? All us like that. All us like that. All us is check different man. And they make a joke about it, they laugh about it, they pray about it. And they, they also say, you know, listen, you go to jail yet? Because everybody in the family is going to jail. Now you have 20 tattoos on you when you come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, you can meet little, little, little Tony and little man in jail. And they say, yeah, man, we, we all go to jail. Because your cousin, because of Pookie, have been in jail. Because I'm going to be in jail. Uh, your sister been in jail. Your father been in jail. That's how we go. Uh, there's, there's this one guy, who, he had 41 of his family members in jail. All of them went to jail until he discovered it was a generational curse. And they talk about a story, I forget his name, I forget his name, but they talk about a story and they did a movie of his life because he was the first one to break it over his family life. Amen? Even his son went to jail and he said that's the way, they all go to jail for murder and killing people and gang banging and this and that. And so that's what happened because until he recognized it and tell someone, begin to preach him in prison and tell him about it, that's when he break it. He break it. He was able to break the curse. And now all of them are out of jail. And I think the last one is coming up and they're all saved. But if they didn't do it, the curse, the curse will remain unbroken. You see, you can know the curse operating, you know. You can say, you know, <laughs> all of us at a certain age, <laughs> uh, we just get heart attack. Uh, that's the family that yeah, the Grammy had it. It's just that you, and you're laughing about it and you're joking about it and you're making fun. And you, you know, all of us go blind at a certain age. All of us just get diabetes when we reach 40. That is something that you need to broke. You know about it, but you continue in it. That's the continuing sin of your forefathers. Why did you stand in the gap for your family and begin to break it? Why did you be the angel of change in your family and break it? People make fun of these things and they say, you know what? No man in our family ever get married. <laughs> you know, let's go way, way back. You know, all we do is we have we players, you know, we're jiggalos in the families, man. That's how we roll, man. That's a badge of honor, man. We just hit it and quit it. You know, we have seven, eight kids. We get put in court, we run, we get run through the court, and then we just move on, man. That's how it is. That's how the men in the family are, man. Why are you trying to do this? That's how he is. So you're getting cool with your demon. You're getting cool with your demon. You're getting close with the demon. You're, 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 you're burning up with the spirit that's controlling the family. This is not a principality, but it's a power under it. Now powers, powers and spiritual wickedness and high places, they're the ones that are responsible for this happening to you. Powers are above them, powers are above them. But I can discuss each one of them in, in line if we have time because I want to do some praying too. So what happens is now, these spirits are, are, are getting familiar with the family. That's why they call them familiar spirits. So they make it feel like it's comfortable. No man, why are you trying to break this? When I was trying to break out of the thing that was in our family, I got more hell. I got more fight. The worst fight didn't come from outside, it came from inside. It was family members saying, you think you're better than us? What you think you're doing? You don't you know this is how it is? This is how we always be? What you talking about, bro? Why you can't all like this? You think you're better than us? Huh? This is how it is. That was not them per se. It was the spirit that was fighting through them to bring me back in line. Because the spirit recognized that I was now striving to get free. And as I began to look at my family tree, they were trying to hide it from me. Because the spirit them know that I was under something. They know that I was coming into freedom and they were fighting me. They began to take my vehicle. They began to take my business. They began to break me up in terms of my, 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 my self-esteem and, and mentality. They began to flip me. They began to put me through all this hardship. Because they know that I was coming out of it and they were trying to move me from getting freedom because it was familiar spirits and these familiar spirits are attached to the incubus spirit and the succubus spirit that takes your life force they are vampire spirits that's why we get the legend of the vampire or the vampire or the dampeel spirit because they came from that spirit which sucks your life force they are worse than physical vampires they suck the life out of you they drain you they suck your they suck your life essence your life energy they take out of you they push out of you that's why when people had an escapade or a night visit from these night spirit and night wives that are familiar they feel drained they wake up feeling drained they feel like they've been beat they feel like they've been fighting 2,000 men at one time they feel like someone dropped an elephant on their head because they have been draining you they they siphon up your life force and they begin to use your life force to perpetuate the evil the evil deeds and they begin to pass it on to those that are in their cult amen they begin to drain your life force that's why sex in the dream is so hideous that's why sex in the dream 
thinking is so wrong on so many levels because they take from you and they steal your virtues from you. They're known as energy vampires. They're the original energy vampires. And what they do is they come into your realm and they siphon off you. That's why some people, when you come out of their presence, you feel drained. You feel drained. And sometimes people come in your presence knowing that they can't have no healing powers and they can't get healed. So they stay there in your presence and steal your energy to heal themselves. Some people do it consciously. Some people do it unconsciously. But by by virtue of what they're doing, they have now been tapped with an incubus spirit. An incubus spirit or skipper spirit or night husband or night or, 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 or familiar spirit is operating through them. And now they come in your presence and feel drained. You feel like you've been frightened. You feel like you've been afflicted. You feel like something was stolen from you. You feel like you've been beaten so bad. Uh, 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 and you can't figure out why it is. You even forget where you're going. I was in the presence of a young man, and he was talking, and he was saying some good things, and he was talking about uh, uh, spiritual things. But when I left him, I forgot what I was even saying. I forgot what I was doing, and I I felt like I was drained, like someone pulled the life force out of me. And I knew that it was a psychic attack. This was a psychic mental attack. Maybe on the surface he was talking good things, but a spirit that was behind him was warring with me. It was fighting me because I felt attacked from the mental realm. I felt drained. I felt like something, someone attached a hose at me and began to siphon off. My God. And so... I recognize that he might not even be aware of it. They may not even be aware of it, but what happened is because they lack the ability or the empathy to, uh, uh, to get healing and they are classic narcissists, what happened is they have to come at you in that way. And they could be very charming, they could be very very engaging, but on the surface, uh, they are, they're, 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 they're very altruistic. But if you were to stay in their presence for any length of time, when you leave, Instead of feeling, instead of feeling lifted up, instead of feeling, uh, you know, like you ever come in the presence of a, of a real man of God, you you don't even have to say nothing. You can just be in his presence or be in the atmosphere, and you feel lifted up. Sometimes your healing could take place right in the atmosphere where you at, because the power of God is on him, and so the light of the living God that is flowing from him, the atmosphere he's carrying, the environment that he's carrying. He now uh, operates in the full measure of the stature of Christ, who he is. And so you can sit down there. He don't have to lay hand on you. He don't have to touch you. You can just be talking to him and you go home and you feel delivered. And then sometimes you just want to be around him. You just want to be around people that are spiritual and that know who they are and uh, that are, they're, not, they're not taking, they're giving out love. They're radiating love because the love of the Father is radiating out of them. But what happened is this person could be a pastor. They could be spiritual. But every time you come from around him, you're being drained. That's because they're takers. They're taking, they're pulling from you and they're not giving anything back they're snatching it and so they're draining energy vampires that are operating through the succubus and incubus spirit I don't know how we got on this but someone needed to hear this today Someone needed to hear this, and so God is delivering someone who needed to hear it, amen? And so, when you find yourself constantly being drained around a person, and I'm not just talking being in the present, I'm talking about even if they call you on the phone, you begin to feel drained and pulled. You begin to feel like something's pulling on you. Mind you, they're saying pleasant things, they're saying nice things, they're, they're even saying spiritual things sometimes, but you're feeling drained and pulled. Not always that's the case, because they might you might be picking about something that they're going through. Uh, if you're sensitive in the spirit, if you're very discerning, you might just be picking up, picking up on something they're going through and that's the occasion but there's a difference you could feel oh i feel a burden for this person maybe they're going to say pray for them but with the other with the with the with the other ends it is like someone drop a rock on your head i'm talking about not as a rock a ball. you feel like you're fighting in a war you feel like you were in a combat zone and you were getting sticked you feel like you're fighting an elephant and the elephant is beating you you feel like you're fighting uh, and you wake up and go to sleep and you have nightmares. That's because you have been engaging in the presence of a spiritual vampire. And these spirits are very wicked. They drain you. And the reason why they have sex with you is not because they enjoy getting off. That too. But what they enjoy doing is they enjoy locking down your destiny. They enjoy polluting your faith. So you cannot move in the realm that God has caused you to move in. That's why they try to open you up to pornography. That's why they try to open you up to all these different things. Because it starts off with that and it builds. And from there you say, well, I wonder what it is to sleep with a woman. 
There's another woman saying, what is to sleep with a woman? And the man said, what is to sleep with a man? When you never had those thoughts before, because now you're picking up on what the succubus is thinking and feeling. You're feeling what he's feeling, and they're fighting you. That's why you can't read the Bible, because the succubus mind is now in your mind. Because you've laid with them, you've now created a link in the realms of the spirit. You've now created a bond. You've now created a tie in the spirit. You've entangled yourself in the realms of the spirit. And so their soul entanglement is now fighting you. You're being fought in the realms of the spirit, because your soul is entangled. Tangle, and so your will, your emotions are tied up in them, and so you're feeling what you're feeling. And you say, Well, where did that thought come from? Why did I now, in church, sitting down, get a good sermon? And I thinking about what so and so would be like if I slept with them. And you say, Well, what happened? That is because that's really not you. It's because of what you got yourself entangled with through the yoking and through those things sleeping with you. And so what happens is you begin to be yoked in the realm of the spirit to them and you begin to think their thoughts. And so they don't want to read the Bible. So you say, well, why do I want to read the Bible? I, mean, I just had a, a great thought and I wanted to preach the word. Now I don't even want to. I will sit down and watch all kinds of carnal stuff. I want to watch this carnal movie and I get caught up in this carnal foolishness. And you say, what happened? Why? Uh, why is it hard for me to see the things of God? And you begin to even hate some people who preach, or you get angry and you to preach the That's because you're picking up on the thing you become one with. Whoever you yoke yourself with, whoever you sleep with, you become one with. And so you can be sleeping with a spirit and become one with that spirit. When you begin to sleep with a spirit, you get something called a spiritually transmitted disease. And all the demons that they slept with. And so what happens is they begin to pass you around uh, in the realms of the spirit. And so what happens is now they begin to have you go with people who are astral projecting. So the spirit will astral project. Someone in New York could be sleeping with you. And it doesn't always have to be a demon. As a matter of fact, this lady said she got angry with her husband too. Don't know why, but they had a knockdown drag out. And she just said, you know, I'm tired of it. This is it. I don't know why, but it's like somebody was pushing them. She left and went to another country. As she came off the train, she met a man there said, hey, glad you came. Say, I'm the one who did this to you. Say, I'm the one who fighting your marriage. I brought you here. Listen, I have all the money you need right now for us because I'm the one who's been fighting you every night. I'm the one who has sex with you in a dream. That's me. And I brought you here. I manipulate your mind and I manipulate you to fight with your husband, but I have a, I have a lot of money for us. Don't go. I'm going to set us up right now. I have lots of money and I'm doing this right now. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, I'm the one who's responsible for, for your problems because I've been, I've been um, with you uh, from long ago. And he was able to tell her name, everything about her, and she never met this man yet. He said, I come to you nightly, nightly, <laughs> and something you even know I'm there, but I visit you nightly and I have my way with you. And now I'm bringing you, I've manipulated you to the point now where you don't want nothing to do with your husband. You hate your husband for no reason. You angry with him, you frustrated with him for no reason. That's me. I'm doing that. And now I brought you here. She broke up running. <laughs> she broke up running. Because, <laughs> you know, she, it was shocking to her. And when she got back to New York, the guy was right there waiting for her. And so she had to begin to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and she began to fight and pray in her spirit and that's what broke the spell. And then she recognized that the fight that she was going through in her marriage was not physical, it was not flesh and blood, it was spiritual and that and that the thing that was fighting her was because of a sexual soul tie with a spirit because at one point in time she was raped. It came in through the spirit of rape and it became the live rape. That's why they try to promote trauma in your life. That's why they try to try to promote trauma in your life because once they can get trauma in your life, they will open a portal. That's why they fragment your spirit. When they fragment your spirit through, uh, through the trauma and through the abuse and, and through the rejection, they begin to fragment you. So you become an open portal. You become a revolving door for demons to come in and out. So you could go to deliverance, you could go to healing, in healing, you could go to all that and the spirit them still have their way with you. And they'll leave for a little while and come right back again because there's some doors that are still open and there's some deep healing issues that have not been dealt with. And so what they've done, they've fragmented and splintered of your spirit. They split your spirit. They split your spirit and they put it in different things. Some of them put it in tires, some of them put it in the ocean, some of them put it in bottles and cans. Some of them they, sp they split it amongst the, the covers they in. The witches split it in the covers and there was a there was a sister uh, wanted to get out of the coven and, and uh, wanted to get out and she was going through deliverance and the thing said, you can't never get out, you can't never get out, you can't never get out. The, the demon talking said, no, you can't never, because we split her, we split her amongst all our covens, I mean, we split her soul up amongst all the covens. We have a piece of it in every coven, that means they took a piece of her, her psyche, her soul, and that's what they use in MK Ultra programming and Monarch programming. That's why I believe a lot of these people that you're seeing now, all these stars, a lot of them have been reprogrammed, they're not who you think they are. They've been under the program and they're, they're looking like them, but they're not them. They've been targeted and they have 
the handlers. The handlers are the producers and their agents are their handlers and they are responsible for them. That's why I believe a lot of these movie producers, they're, they're producing movies but they're really handlers. They're deep into the cult and so they handle the stars. Amen. They, they deprogram them and reprogram them to do what they want to do. Amen. That's why you will see men get up on stage and wear a dress. I recently was watching uh, the Oscars, I think, or, or something and this man was wearing a black dress. Do you see it? He had on the top right here but he's wearing a dress. And I saw these pastors were married in this church. This pastor was a man and another man and they were married. So what is happening now? They're promoting this system. They're promoting this androgynous spirit. It's the pan spirit. It's the spirit of pan. It's a hermaphroditic system that they're promoting for us to, uh, to tap into. And a lot of people are now leaving here from the Bahamas and going to the States to get married. And some of them are getting married. Men and men and women and women. And they come back here and live as couples because they've been married over there. My God. <clears throat> And so we see the spirit, amen? Know that anytime you go through this, the same feeling that you've been attacked, you've been attached, you've been siphoned off, and they've come into you, and they've now begun to move into your, uh, into your spirit, amen? They, they're trying to attack your soul, and they're trying, to, uh, 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 they're trying to, 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 to really steal your virtue and your blessings, amen? Trying to steal from you. Some people, they prayed over you, and once they prayed over you, you felt worse. They laid hands upon you, and you felt, uh, uh, it is not, not all the time, not all the time, sometimes because there are some things, <clears throat> there are some things uh, that you have, it's like the, you, the resistance there, amen? But not always, but there are some people that as they're, as, they're, as they're praying for you, because they have the spirit attached to them, they're now releasing it into your life, amen? And so you're seeing that. That's why the Bible says, lay, let no man lay hands on you suddenly, amen? And that's why you should try the spirit, test the spirit to see whether it be of God, amen? Because a lot of people that will, will, will come to you and say they're prophets, they're not prophets, or they're prophets, and they're not prophets, amen? Uh, they, 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 they're, denying, they're denying the power of, amen? They have a form of godliness, but denying the power of. And what happens is uh, they... They deny that Jesus came in the flesh, amen? They deny he was risen again. You see when they're doing that? When they're doing this? That means that they are, they're, 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 they're false prophets, amen? They've been sent by the evil one to try to destroy, uh, to destroy uh, the, the credibility and to weaken the body. There are many people who are, who are uh, cultic in nature. Now, I, I can give you some clues. There are those who are in the cult. They, they let you know they're in the cult, amen? They let you know, I will kill you if you mess with me. I am a witch, I'm a warlock. I will kill you. Then they could point at you and you could fall down and die. These are what I call the overt rich. They are some gomas. They are the babaloos. They are the root workers. They are the conjure man. They let you know that this what they into. My God. And they will tell you that I could disappear and reappear at any time. And I'm coming for you. Or I'm working on you. And sometimes you even see them in a dream. And they'll tell you, um, this is who I am. <laughs> and I come to you. I've been assigned to your case because I've been paid money to deal with you. There's a professional hit. Amen. They are the generals. They operate at night. These are the night raiders. They come to you, like I said again, again I say, the Babalus, the Sangomas. They come to you as the herbalists. They come to you as, uh, as, as uh, 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 um, the witches. Amen? And the mothers, the mothers, the mothers, the mothers. There's some mothers. <laughs> they are mothers. <laughs> <laughs> they operate in the Kalima system. Amen. They could they could come to you at night time and they could make you feel like they're your best friend. They could feed you and oh you're feeling good. Oh they see cool big they laugh at me and they do this. That's because they're fighting you in the realms of the spirit, amen. And they come to attack you. And because you're vulnerable at night time, because night time is the, the time when you are most vulnerable because it's the time when the barriers between the world is rent, amen? And that's when they can come through because that's when they're allowed to do their wickedness. They're called children of the night. They're known as the children of Kanam. They're known as the children of Kush. They know the, they're known as the children of Nebo. They come at you in that area because they know the powers of the night. They know the powers of the night, amen? They know that the night time is when the veil is drawn, when the moon is up. They're known as children of the moon. They worship the moon goddess and they can come through the moon because the moon is responsible for a lot of people's feeling. We don't know that. Uh, we might not know that, but the moon is responsible for the, for the centrifugal forces of the pull on the earth. That's why we have low tide. That's why we have high tide. That's why we have certain feelings at certain times. That's why we can, you can plant crops at a certain time with the moon because that's when the earth is in its rotation and it's now able to bear fruit. It's knowing the times and seasons. They study these things, folks and they know them very well. And uh, there's a second type. The second type, 
they're what I call a secret witches and a secret warlock. Their number one goal is that you could never know who they are. You could never know who they are. And they go to the meetings in the astral realm. They go into the meetings in the astral realm. They do not meet normally. They meet or they meet, they meet in secret places. I hope I'm not scaring anybody because I'm just trying to give you all a, a basis and a foundation. They meet in secret. Their assignment is from the principalities and powers, but they get their they get their assignment from spiritual wickedness and high places. Their assignment is to come into the church. They can come into the anointing. They can listen to the anointed message. They can sit in the church. They have no fear of the church. They can come in and listen to the service. They can come in there and they can partake. They become leaders in the church. They become Sunday school teachers. They become uh, leaders on the deacon board. They become deacon members. They become uh, head of special ministries in the church. They become bus drivers. They become assistant pastors in the church. But they cannot be known. And their number one secret is never to be known. If you were to call them that in public, they will deny you. That's why when they say him, that's the worst. No, no, no. He's an upstanding citizen. He is man. Listen, let me tell you something. No, no, no. You, you got to be crazy. You, you, man, you're paranoid. Everybody's a witch to you. Ah. But see, what happens, you got a revelation on it, and you know what it is in the spirit. The Lord show you some things, and some other people confirm it from different places. Man, you know, there are some people who are just paranoid. Everything is a witch, and everything is a wall. No, that's not what we're talking here. We're not trying to, you know, find a witch under every tree, under every rock. No, we're not being paranoid. We're just calling out for what it is. Amen? But what happened is they'll be in the church with you. Their number one job is to stop those that have potential. They will look at you and say, you know what? I see so and so have a lot of potential. They will then go into their astral realm and their astral meeting or their secret coven and they will report back to them. They'll say, so and so is going to be so and so. And we see the light around them. We see the light around this one. And they'll say, okay, how can we stop them? So what they will begin to do is they'll begin to offer you uh, to come out with them to certain places. They won't tell you what they are. They will begin to buy you gifts. They'll begin to give you gifts. But known, low, unknown to you is attached to those gifts are familiar spirits and demon spirits that attach. Once you've taken the gift, you've now made a covenant. So you've now taken this in your house. They'll begin to buy you food and have home cooked meals for you. They'll invite you out and yet you'll be talking about Jesus Christ. You'll be talking about the Bible. You'll be talking about the spiritual problem. They will pray with you. They counsel you. Some of them are your prayer partners that you're praying with and do not know that they have another allegiance. They're agents of darkness that have been sent to be a, 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 a spy, so to speak. They've infiltrated the church and now they've taken a position as a leader in the church. The number one goal is to get leadership in the church. They want to get leadership in the church. And once they get in a position of power, they can begin to destroy it from within. And they will not come out. And you will never know that they are. The number one thing is they remain hidden. They remain secret. They do not let you know. And they will never let you know. But what they want to do, they're on a mission to recruit you. So they'll bring you in slowly. They'll begin to show you certain things. That's what they do. A hidden witch will do this. With, uh, with, with, when, uh, see, what happens is a lot of people, they let their children go and live with their aunt or their uncle. Or they let them go live with the, even a grandmother, granddad, but never know that their grandmother or granddad were in, into witchcraft. And so what they'll do, they will introduce the child slowly into it. They'll begin to give him food. And this, they'll, they'll begin to give him food. And the food contains blood. The food contains human flesh. The food contains uh, 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 sacrifices made to devils. So uh, what they'll do is they'll begin to introduce them to the dead bird. They'll say, look at that bird. What do you think about that bird over there? They say, you see that dead bird? What they're doing is they're conditioning him to see dead things. Then after that, they'll, they'll show him a dead dog, a dead dog, a mutilated dead dog. And so if he didn't run from the bird, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll say, okay, that's nothing bad. And they show him a dead dog. And look, look at that dead dog there. there. They'll introduce him to that. Then they'll begin to carry him in the bush. They'll begin to show him certain things. Things. They'll begin to give him certain uh, uh, plants. They'll begin to say, this is the mandrake that we use, and this and that. What you think of that? What they're doing is they're slowly inculcating him into the system. And by the time he reached 1820, they've already shown him all the secrets of witchcraft, and now he is a full-blown witch. Saints, be careful where you let your kids go, even the family members. Some of your kids went to them. And you let them hold them for a while and they change your children. They put stuff in their food. They begin to inculcate them. They begin to train them. And they didn't even know they're being trained to become a warlock or witch. And they begin to introduce them to dead things. Then they bring a dead person and they put dead, they show them dead people and dead things. What they're doing is they're showing them dead things so they could become used to dead stuff. So they could get a spirit in them. And so what happens is they find that they want to go in the graveyard. Then they would begin to now take them in the graveyard because they've graduated from the dead dog. They've graduated from going to the morgue. And now they could begin to take them in the graveyard because they, what they're doing is gradually they're, they're, they're inculcating them and they're in and 
inundating them with the same system and they're bringing them up to that place where they don't even know they're being trained to do these things and so now they take them to the graveyard and they watch their reaction in the graveyard first they go there to pay respects to so and so and now after that they say okay but let's go here they seem okay with this and so they say can you think you could you could sleep with you at night what do you think you brave enough and so they will say oh, I, I, I can do that you sure oh, you'll be scared you'll we'll be scared eh? Hmm? Hmm? come on you brave you brave boy you can do that and what they don't know by the time they sleep there in the graveyard or on the uh, on the tombstone <coughs> the spirit that is now attached to the grave, yes, the graveyard will become invisible them and then they'll begin to possess them from there. They'll have strange dreams of talking to strange people. What they're doing is they didn't know that they've been inducted and initiated into the occult to do voodoo and to do obia. This man in Jamaica was talking about it and his name is Lee Smith. He was talking about how he even went to the church. He went to a church and he was birthed into this thing and they didn't even know that he thought that he was going to a church. He was going to a Pentecostal church. But he said he didn't know that behind the scenes was was another level where once they see you gifted and talented and that's what the enemy does the enemy looks for children children that are gifted and talented that have a, a propensity for uh, being uh, being used by Christ being used by the Lord so what they try to do is they try to turn them early in life so they will be used for the enemy to fight against Christ and that's what happened to certain people this guy said he he used to be Obi man for, for, for 22 years he said uh, his name is Lee Smith Lee Smith you can look it up yourself if you don't believe me and he said that he did much evil uh, and he was practicing this for, for about 22 years and he said that the rituals that he would do would cost up to sometimes a hundred thousand dollars he said all the all the major players in Jamaica came to him and people from all around the world they came for him but he was introduced to this church uh, while attending a uh, Pentecostal church, a revivalist church, but in the back of the church there was there was a, there was another level, and he said he got certified in there, and he said it's just like running a business. They, he got certified in there, and he became a a, a obi man, obi man, obi means snake. It's a snake from the garden. It came from the Egyptian word for snake, and means obia, but it means obi, the all wise seeing snake, the snake of wisdom, the serpent of wisdom. It came from Egypt. Egypt is the mother lord of all them, which came, which uh, actually came out of Babylon, Babylon, and. Uh, and mystery Babylon and mystery Egypt, they all connected and they all have Osa and Oset and Osiris as a part of them. And that's where Obi come from. Obi is a is a derivative of a Caribbean version, of an African Caribbean version of the spirit of Janice and Jambres who could uh, who were able to transform their uh, their rod into snakes because they had the mysteries, they know the mysteries. That's why they didn't think it's strange when Moses turned his uh, uh, staff into snake because they could do that. They had the powers to do that. They knew about this stuff long time ago. And so they practiced something called Obi, Obi Ya. Obi means or one, the, or, the, or the all wise one. This is where we get the all seeing eye from the eye of Ra, the eye of Horus, the eye of Set. Amen. These are the all seeing eyes of knowledge. It means the eyes of enlightenment. It means the eyes of of wisdom it also is representative of the owl the owl is the bird of knowledge and enlightenment and it can see what others can't see and it can also see in the dark my god are you getting this yes that's it right there thank you very much yeah wow <laughs> you got it <laughs> praise god and he said how how he would uh, I mean, he would charge up to one hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars just to do, uh, just to do a spell or give baths. That's why I'm saying, if you've been in a spiritual bath, that's why you might not be able to get your breakthrough because this man was giving baths. And he said, all the who's who came to him, and he said he would go into the demonic realm and he would give people stuff to wear. They would wear something called a demonic ring. A lot of these rings that people have on, they're not, they're not rings. They're called God rings. They use these things to practice witchcraft and for protection. And guess who is number one customers are? This the more customers are police. The police know about this because the police always have to deal with it. The police are always finding these altars. They will find these altars all through uh, Jamaica, all through Jamaica, the Caribbean islands. They were finding these altars with sacrifices of humans. And they were so scared and frightened. So they went to them too because they knew that a lot of these gang members would come to him too to get stuff done on them. So when they go to court, when they go to jail or go to the court or when they're facing things, the bullet never touched them. They could be in a shootout and nothing ever touched them because they have... These things put on them and they're giving God rings. And this is where he got indoctrinated in St. Anne's. 
Uh, this is where he got certified, and he said he must go there every three months to renew his uh, his license as a practitioner, as almost like a school, and to give an update on what is going on. And this is where it happened. It happened in the parish of St. Anne, and he got certified, and he gave his first bath in St. Thomas. My God, what time is it? Wow. Yes. Yes. Very, very good, Alain. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So what happened is, what happened is, because of the coming of the Lord, because of the time, the lateness uh, of, the, of the hour, amen, we've got to get on the horse. These are what I call spiritual paninas. They are throwing it up. Now he's praised God. He's saved. And see, that's what God allowed him to do. God allowed him to go into the, into the, into the witch's den, and then He saved them so they could come out and expose all the working of the adversary. Amen. He's saved, and He's saying that a lot of people are in church. Amen. And we just finished talking about it. A lot of people are in churches, but what happened is they come in there, they get infiltrated. No doubt that that church probably started off. Uh, uh, the St. Thomas is known as Duppy Town. Wow, Duppy Country. Thank you, Doctor Sandro. Wow. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> yeah. don't be a dumpy, no dumpy, oh Lord, they, they're in the deep darkness. And so what happened is no doubt that church might have started off like that, but they were infiltrated by someone who came in and, and, and introduced them slowly into that. And there was another doorway, that's what I was talking about, how to introduce you slowly to them. And like I said, these hidden witches and hidden warlocks, they don't want to be known, so they'll have a secret uh, a, a section right in pray inside, a secret section right in pray inside where, they will, uh, where they'll be right there openly worshiping God. Uh, falling under the power, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, ministering, prophesying, and speaking. But I tell you something, when a person who's a demonic prophet speaks over your life, what will happen is they'll take your destiny away from you. And what they'll release to you is a curse. They'll release a curse to you and steal your destiny. They're what I call the ultimate energy vampires because they're not talking from God. They're talking from a divination spirit that they've now gotten from the enemy. And this is a psychic spirit. That's what happens. These spirits of the dead are the ones that could tell you things about your auntie who passed on, your mother who passed on, your cousin who passed on. Because these familiar spirits have tapped into the record and they call out of other familiar spirit and they tell them all the information and then they pass it on to you and they can begin to speak accurately into your life because these are demon spirits that are now familiar. Amen. And in Jamaica, it is known as as watching the uh, what I would call water watching, water watching and water scrying. They they call it scrying, water scrying, and they use something called mirror scrying. It's where they look into the mirror and begin to read your life and begin to watch you. And what they do too is a lot of them too, they will actually trade sex with you for, for what they're doing. They tell you all about your life and they'll say the only way I can get this off you is to have sex with you. And many people are coming out of the closet and saying, I was so embarrassed when I, you know, I wanted to get this stuff off me and I wanted to get my husband back. I wanted to get my uh, this lover back I had with this man. He charged me all his money and then on top of that, he told me that the, 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 the spirits tell him that he must have sex with me to get it off. And uh, a lot of them said so they felt violated and dirty after that and nothing worked out for them after that. Because what they did was they put the spirit in them now. And so now they have another soul tie, put a soul tie, amen. And so what happens is, he said apart from the, the rituals and, and, and um, the ritual baths, uh, um, that they would they would uh, they would also do something again like I said called the guard rings and they will sacrifice this blood they will uh, uh, sacrifice blood he said he killed a lot of people uh, to to sacrifice they will sacrifice a goat a cow um, or, or 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 if you don't even come and do the the ritual over at a certain time it requires blood it will take some of your family members you understand me you see how this go you see why a lot of people in Hollywood uh, family went missing or family died mysteriously after they became superstars or they become and that's another thing superstars the superstar is the highest star that is the star of of uh, of Kanum. that's the star of Nimrod that they worship amen it's the Nova star but they have to worship and they have to sell out that's why anybody in Hollywood right now just about all they have to sell their soul to get those positions and that's why they have to keep making sacrifices and if they don't renew it they will take their family members they will take their family members and then eventually they will take their life that's why a lot of them go crazy look at Kanye West look at how he went crazy look at how Miley Cyrus started acting like a snake with a, pulling the tongue in the mouth. That's an indication that the snake spirit is operating. Look at Jane uh, Simmons from Kiss and all them. Look at how they went crazy. Look at how that that, uh, that girl, um, what's her name? I forget her name. She was very popular back in the day. Um, 
her and Christina Aguilera always competed with each other. How they always went crazy. And they would lose people close to them uh, because they had to give up something. I mean, they had to give up something for it to work. And he said, again, this guy said the police were his number one uh, customers and clients because uh, they know there's dealing with because they, 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 a lot of them were under attack from even dealing with crimes, um, occultic crime, because there's a unit called uh, crime, the crime occultic unit, because they're finding um, um, altars with human remains all over the nation. When you see them doing it all over the nation, you know what they're doing? They're locking in the nation. That is a principal spirit that's telling them you need to go around the whole nation, the four corners of the nation, and you need to give a sacrifice of a human. Once they would have given a sacrifice of a human, they will have Britney Spears. Thank you very much. Very, very good. Thank you, Diane. Britney Spears. You see how she's going stark, raving crazy? That's because she made a deal with the Baphomet. Thank you, Bevan Spawn. Uh, because he made a deal with the Baphomet, amen, and that's why it was sending them crazy. But when they recognize that the money, the fame, and the power doesn't make them happy, and they say, you know what, I saw my soul, look at Eminem and all of, uh, all of Jay-Z, them. look at them, they're not happy, man, these people are not happy, yet they got all this money, all the cars, all the, all the fame that they can have, and yet they're in the prison, they're still in the prison, they're in the prison of their own making, some of them can't even go out, they're going to have 40, 50 guys around them, they can't even go sleep, because every time they go sleep, the things them torment them, the very same things that they had to come up, that they call up as summons, now giving them problems, amen, and now the same thing they had to pray over, is giving them problems, the very thing that they pray over, even the master that they use to pray over, the master copy, that's why some people can't stop listening to their songs, because they They've prayed over it by a, a high-ranking Satanist and a Druid warrior priest who now used the incantation and the wand, which is which is what they use the Hollywood to give them uh, to give the the master copy uh, their power, and they they use the backward masking and the subliminal messages in it. So when you listen to it, you can't stop listening to it, and so you recognize uh, uh, that you know why why I can't stop listening to this, this song? Why I can't I stop listening to the Soldier Boy song or or or, or or uh, all these other artists kind of these songs because there's something uh, uh, attack, uh, attracting you to it. It's a demon attached to the to the music, and every time one of those releases, a demon goes in, and as you listen to it, it begins to to get in your psyche and your subconscious mind, and you can't stop listening to it, and uh, you open yourself up to curse without even knowing it, and so the curse is in there. Same thing they with the movie, and that's why I, I be, I'm going to do a lot of decoding on movies, so you're going to see me doing a lot of that and tying it into this whole satanic pagan system that they're using, pagan Hollywood, Babylon Hollywood, Babylon America, Babylon global community, because everybody now is following after Babylon, the mystery Babylon, the harlot that sits upon many waters and many nations are now polluting the whole nations, because whatever we see uh, America do, the nations do, and if you see that, you see how they're uh, perverting the nations, nations that once had old, old values are now coming out, I even see Indian rappers, them Indian with this chic, I see chic them rapping. I said, wow, look at Sheikdom rapping. And they're doing it. And now the Sheikdom having these Indian ladies from India uh, uh, try to dress like Beyonce them. And they they saying, they rap it and they they talking funny. I say, look at the Indian cheeks with their head all tied up with turban on their head, rapping and doing like Eminem them. You see how they're perverting them. And they look so weird because they, now they got the Lamborghinis and the cars. And I say, look at them, look, look at them. Look how they're following after Babylon. And, they're, they're, and, and she made the whole wild drunk, drunk with a fornication, with a horums. That's the trafficking of the nations. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, the third level is, the third level of witches are the ones that don't know they're witches and they're witches. These are the witch that have been secretly initiated through, through, uh, through uh, birth, you could have been born into, again, born into the cultic realm and didn't know that you were sacrificed to Satan, didn't know that your ancestors did it, and so you find yourself drifting into this, drifting into this lifestyle, drifting into this thing. You find yourself gravitating to horror movies, and even though you despise it, there's a part of you that is... Uh, that is fascinated by it. You find yourself fascinated with the dark arts. You find yourself uh, fascinated with, with movies that have magician themes and magician and magical overtones. And you find yourself like, you know, which is all about? And you find yourself drifting to the Wiccan um, philosophy, you know, do with our world. And you see, that's why they're promoting. They're promoting this even now, do with our world. And so you find yourself promoting to this same philosophy, do with our world. That's the whole of the law. Do with our world. You can do whatever you want to do. And that's what uh, Alistair Crawley said. Alistair Crawley was the most notorious man on the earth. He was known as the Beast. Even his mother's mother called him the Beast. And he was the, 
the founder of the one of the founders I think or he's a part of the Golden Dawn and he found the order I think it was the order of the order of the Templars or or OTO the OTO order. He formed them and he was also uh, a person who practiced ritual sacrifices and ceremonial magic. And he was also a great friend of Gerald Gardner. Gerald Gardner is responsible for modern day Wicca. And there's several branches of it. There's the Alexandrian levels, there's the old ones, and now there's Gard Gardenians. They call them Gardenian uh, witches. And I think most people are the modern ones. And they have something called the Book of Shadows that they carry around with them. And every one of them now have a Book of Shadow that they have. Amen. And so any Book of Shadow that has a name and a reading decree that it burns up right now in Jesus Christ's name. But yet I say you can be introduced into it because of generational you could be one of those persons who don't even know that you've been born into it and they didn't tell you they forgot about it they become saved they put away their stuff but they never told you amen and so you find yourself fighting another way that you could be attached to it is true bringing a cursed object into your house another way that they could initiate you is to bringing a cursed objects into your house as we saw with Achan amen you could be handling unholy things you could be and handling unholy things have you ever seen something and and you heard don't touch this do not touch this or you heard the Holy Spirit don't touch it you could see a coin on the ground you could see an object on the ground and you heard you heard the voice of the Holy Spirit saying leave that alone or move away from that you could have picked up something you could have stepped over something you could have been handling unholy things and not even know that it was something attached to it you could have been given honor or someone could have been given honor in your family line to devils and demons or you could be following demonic fads every trend that comes out is not the trendy thing to do amen some of them are born in hell some of them are born in the marine kingdom and we're following these things amen you could have territorial violation rights there could be a violation of territorial rights there could be land that's been stolen there could be generational land that's been stolen land that's been taken from people that you have now in your possession and now you're being fought with and don't even recognize it and so family curse is on there could be a curse that was issued to you by another person who your forefathers did evil to and the curse is now running in the family line you, you for instance your great-grandmother could have slept with someone's husband or taken the husband and the woman said you know what this is gonna happen to you this is gonna happen to you da 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 ra da da and I curse you and I curse your line and nothing happened to her right then and there but the line pick it up amen the line pick it up and so the Thing was remembered amen and so the thing was remembered you could also be touching satanic ground you could be on some grounds and don't even know they're satanic in nature and that's why we gotta pray where we go when you go to hotels motels when you go to any grounds you need to anoint and pray over the grounds particularly if you're sleeping in the rooms or beds because we had an, a major attack in one hotel room we went to and we didn't know what happened and the Lord revealed to us that there was some Satanists that was sleeping in the room before us and that they might have been doing rituals and as we begin to anoint the place and we began to command it uh, we, we had peace in the room and then we took authority over it. and then we went to another hotel and we saw the pictures was very strange and the picture felt like it was watching us and so we began to anoint the place and we began to anoint the picture amen and close down whatever's watching us through a picture because we felt uneasy and then sometimes you go to a place and sometimes the women who are working even the maids are deep into Santeria and into into Kundumble and they're into Macumba and into Obia and they come in your room and they begin to do stuff in the room So you got to pray over the room because some of them are foreigners not all and sometimes they come there with Intent to do things to you because they know who you are That's why you should be so very care careful who comes in your room. Amen <laughs> That's why you should be very careful who comes in your room And so what happened is the enemy wants to fight you in every area of your life. Amen. That's why we see that you could be you could be going into battle against the devil, against demons, without being specifically commanded by God to do so. Amen? Don't go into battles that you're not qualified for. You could end up getting yourself in so much trouble. Do not go into things that God has not anointed you for. You could pick up so much spirits as a result of that. God's mercy is still there, but you could end up picking up spirits that you don't need to, to pick up on. Amen? You could pick up spirits that could fight you. That's why you could even be going into a level where you're not qualified in. Some people are calling themselves pastors and they're not really pastors. God didn't anoint you for that. You went, you were not sent. Some people are prophets when they're really evangelists and they're calling themselves prophets. And so what happens is when the 
demon that has signed the prophets come and attack you, you, you find yourself in all kinds of trouble. There are some people who church have never grown. You have five members and you always will have five members and you've not grown from that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm saying sometimes you might not be flowing in your calling. Your calling might be to be as a deacon, but yet you're calling yourself a pastor. Your calling might be to be a pastor, you're calling yourself a prophet. Now, I'm not saying that prophet can't have pastoral abilities. I mean, there are some pastors who can operate like that, but you'll find that your life is being fought. Amen. And some people, they're in the wrong calling and they're having tremendous warfare over their life. They've opened the warfare over their life because they're calling themselves apostle and they don't have the apostle qual uh, qualification. They've not been vetted by God. They've not been uh, 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 qualified by God. And so they're stepping into the office without having the anointing. And so when the when the, the demons that come to fight apostolic anointing come to them and step to you, there's havoc in your life because you have no power to resist them. And so they will come. When you call yourself these, these things, there are certain devils devils will come and touch itself to you and try to fight you because there are certain demons that are assigned to prophets, they're assigned to pastors and teachers too as well. And so if you're not a teacher, but you have teaching ability and you're teaching that, that's fine. You know, but, you, but you'll find that there's a battle in an area that you might not be able to handle us because God might have called you in that area. Now we're all called to be ministers, we're all called to, uh, to talk and speak uh, what thus says the Lord. But know that if you're in a calling and you're not, you're not qualified or vetted for it, you can open yourself up to serious warfare. And and if you're battling things that you're not qualified to battle with, you could be uh, getting it on over your head. Amen. And so you've got to know wisdom and begin to get spiritually stronger to take on some of these things. That's why the Lord told the children of Israel, there are some battles I don't want you to go through. I'm going to send you another way so you won't have to battle these people because they're too strong for you right now. And if you go against them, you'll be defeated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you another way so I can strengthen you. I can give you some easier battles, some easier fights so you can fight these battles. You can have these battles and fight them and you'll get stronger. As you get stronger and stronger, you grow in the anointing, you grow in your position, you grow in your authority, you grow in your atmosphere. And so some people, uh, if they were to take on the battle that I'm taking on, they'll literally die. If you fight my warfare or the start of my shoes for one day, you'll probably die. I'm not saying that to try to boast or brag. I'm just saying the qualifications and the calling that I'm assigned to is, is, is because that's the call I've had. And so the warfare that I had would probably be different from your warfare because I'm dealing with different uh, arenas. I'm probably dealing with principalic spirit now. And so that's what happens. We sometimes are dealing with different levels of demon spirits that are attached to people and places and situation. And even so, they could be living on a, a cursed land. Yes, a land could be cursed. You could be living on a cursed land and don't even know it. Amen. You could be living on a clean land. Some people were living on an Indian burial ground and didn't even know it. <laughs> And they were wondering why every night they were being fought. Every night they were fight, fight. And every night someone was, um, every day someone was dying. And everything, every time they, they would go there, it would be broken down. They were trying to build a hotel. Didn't do their research. Didn't do their background check. Didn't know that it was sold as a property or land. But it was haunted. Amen. It was haunted. It was an Indian, old Indian burial ground that the realtors just wanted to sell to get off their hand. And they sold it to them at a rock bottom price. And they they discovered when they did their research when the men started dying when things started to happen when there was malfunctioning equipment when there was tremendous nightmares and and horrible stuff going wrong and the project couldn't be completed they discovered that it was a indian burial ground that they were trying to build on and so what happened is you could be living in a hearse uh, sorry a house that has been cursed as well i mean it could be a house that has been cursed the former tenants might have been drug dealers and they might have spilled tremendous blood in the house. They could have been Wiccans, they could have been dabblers, they could have been people who just basically into their cult, but you didn't know it and they went in there and you didn't know and so you start to experience attacks after attacks and didn't know why. You could move into the neighborhood and from the time you move into the neighborhood, things went down. They didn't get better, they went down. And it went down, 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 down uh, until you begin to understand and begin to attach and track it and see that it was the area and the neighborhood that you are living in. It's a cursed area. And you find out that some of the areas that you're living in, instead of you going up, you come down. That's because the, the grounds has not been sanctified and rededicated to the Lord and they've not been they've not been zoned and, and spiritually they still they still have they still have things attached to it. Amen. Are you guys getting this? Oh wow, time to pray. <laughs> time to pray. 
The Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let's cover everybody. We're going to take, we're going to do part two on next week, amen. We just started something, and I feel like you know God is doing something uh, for the believers. Are you guys enjoying this? Father, we thank you, we thank you for what you're about to do. We thank you for what you've already done. God, we give you glory, we give you honor today, and we just bless the Lord for you. We give you wisdom. We ascribe wisdom to you, honor and glory, Father, and we thank you for what you've done through your Son, Jesus Christ. God, we just thank you for uh, for giving us wisdom, God, to to know how to defeat our enemies and to be wiser, because ignorance is not bliss, and the enemy wants us to be walking around in ignorance, amen, and a lot of people perish for lack of knowledge, according to Hosea 4 and 6, and, and a lot of people have sold themselves out to uh, to Satan, and they've made covenant with death, heaven and grave, and they've sold their children into that, Lord. And so we thank you right now, God, for blessing, Father God, this, this session, blessing with this teaching, Lord. May it help someone today, Father. May it help someone. Can you hear it now? Are you hearing it now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? So Father God, we just thank you for everybody on here tonight. God, we just bless uh, uh, Sister Jennifer Ellis. I speak a blessing over Arlene. I speak a blessing over Dawn, Dawn Fernanda. I bless you, Dawn. I bless Maureen. I bless uh, Sister Anne Boleg. Uh, um, my condolences to you, woman of God. Uh, Jillian Curry Williams, uh, Jennifer Parks, God bless you. God bless you. I speak a blessing of you, Rashili Jones. I speak a blessing of you, Chandra Douglas. I speak a blessing over Judge Franklin Williams. I speak a blessing over Zelly Trotman in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak a blessing over Rihanna. I speak a blessing over Rihanna. Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Praise God. I speak a blessing over Indira. I release uh, the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and have no sorrow over Kishma Benton George. God bless you, woman of God. Diane... Homer, God bless you. Bless you, Rhonda uh, Spice. Awesome. Rhonda Spence, God bless you. Marva. Nicole Raga, God bless you. I speak a blessing of you. Increase and favor over you. Marvelous Marva, God bless you. Uh, uh, Golden, Shanisha Golden, God bless you. Kira Adley, God bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Anton Innes, God bless you. 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 I speak a blessing over you. I speak tremendous favor over your life. Coretta, break every train. Make every chain I decree is broken over you right now. And I speak blessings over you. I speak increase and favor over your life. I decree this is the year of your favor. This is the year where you're giving birth right now. You're you're birthing something tremendous. Stay in the birthing position. Do not get out of position in the season. Stay in position because you're birthing something tremendous. You're birthing something spectacular. And God is going to surprise you. God is going to do it suddenly for you. Uh, marvelous marvel. God is doing it suddenly for you. Uh, Dawn, Fernanda, get ready for suddenly. Get ready for God to make it very uh, beautiful for you. Uh, become... Uh, become very persistent in what you're doing, become very determined, become very disciplined in what you're doing, uh, uh, become very uh, very wise in what you're doing this season. I decree it upon you, Kathy Jackson. I speak blessings upon you. I decree it upon you. I decree everything that came against your potential, that attacked your potential. I decree is being broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree it will be so. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, no weapon that is forged against you will prosper. I decree this is the season of your overwhelming testimony. Uh, Kaninga, Tarika. I bless you today in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak a blessing of you, uh, uh, Philip uh, Thomas Parks. I bless you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release the glory of God to flow, even those who are watching under the sound of my voice. Even now, Father God, wherever they are, Father God, there is no distance in the spirit. I speak over Kaz Brett right now watching. I release the glory and power of God to flow at another level into her life. I thank you right now for charity. I bless God for charity. And I speak a blessing over charity. I decree that she will reach her full potential in God. I decree she will reach her full potential in the Lord. 
I decree that this is the time and the season when the deception of the adversary will be exposed and he who's coming after our potential, he who's coming after our potential will recognize that instead of putting us down, they'll put us over even as Penina didn't know that the Lord was using her. I bless God for Chantel, I bless God for Chantel, and I decree the Peninas in our life will cause us to cry out to God. The Peninas in our life will cause us to cry out to God. But the Peninas in our life will cause us to cry out for our community. The Peninas in our life will cause us to cry out for our city. The Peninas in our community will cause us to cry out for those that are in political power and those that are that are in the church but are now moving into a place of apostasy. We pray that they will get the fire back for God. And we pray that God would begin to bring them into alignment with His purposes. We decree that we will not move in Kairos, we will not move in Kronos time, but we will move in Kairos timing. We decree that we will move in the timing of the Lord. We will not feel agitated, we will not feel rushed, we will not feel anxious or feel like we are not getting anywhere. I decree the spirit of anxiousness. I come against the spirit of anxiousness. The anxious spirit, the panicky spirit, the spirit of stress. I break that over your life. Run the blessed spans. I break it over you, girly, uh, uh, girly Christian. I command it to be broken over your life. I decree those that have been fighting you will not be able to see you in the spirit. I decree that God will give you sweet rest and he will rest round about from your adversaries and he will give you strategies to defeat them. I decree that God is raising up generals, amen, in this in his army and God is getting his army ready for the day of Armageddon. We're getting ready to it, close to it, folks. We're seeing that, uh, that they're bringing these things, this transgender movement, transgender movement, trans, uh, transgenderism. And transhumanism movement is really a demonic spirit, an incubus spirit that is uh, morphodite in nature. They can take on whatever whatever suits them to, for the case they're doing. And so they're bringing the same spirit into into our lives, amen? And they're bringing it, and they're very uh, bigoty with it. They're very bold with it. And they're coming into church. People are now saying men are marrying in church. Two men are marrying. Pastors are marrying a male pastor is marrying another male pastor. A female pastor is marrying another female pastor. They're now having gay pastors in the church. Amen? Pastoring churches. And this ought not to be. This is the season and this is the time when the Lord is saying, get ready. Amen? Because it's coming close. Amen? And there's going to be a great falling away. There's going to be a great apostasy, but they're going to be right in the church. It's not going to be where they leave the church so much as they're going to just leave in consciousness. Amen? When you're backsliding, you're backsliding right in church and you're saying amen and hallelujah and glory be to God. But what happens is you can't see the backslide because it's done in the invisible, it's done in your heart. And that's why the Bible says the heart of the sheep above all things and desperately wicked. That's why we got to uh, uh, examine our heart daily, amen? And so I speak blessings upon you, Maureen. I speak increase over you. I speak favor uh, over you. I decree every demonic dream that's been attacking you, uh, Jillian, has been attacking you, Charity. I cancel its power over you. I come against any spirit that's been fighting you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, time is moving fast to carry on. And that's what's happening because the Lord is speeding up time. Because if He doesn't, the very lack will get deceived. The very lack that means the children of God. And because it's going to be a, such a deception, amen. And the false Christ is coming back. The false Christ is going to make us make us uh, entry, amen. And He's going to come with lying signs and wonders, amen. And so even the Vatican is now uh, watching for this alien Messiah that's coming. They're watching for this uh, alien Messiah that's coming, amen. And and they're looking through the telescope and they're saying that He's an alien. They're saying that He's a uh, He's a He's from another planet, amen. They're saying he's an alien spirit, amen. And they're, they're saying that he's an ET, extraterrestrial, in the sense of the word that they're saying that it's not Jesus anymore. It's an alien Messiah that's coming. It's not the, it's not the God of the Bible. It's not the Christ of the Bible. It's another Christ. It's another spirit. It's an antichrist spirit. It is here, amen. And so we break that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rabba kasaba baba rabba baba. Rabba, I come against every spirit that's been attacked in your marriage, amen. Uh, even even uh, the molestation in the dream, even those who've been molested uh, as a kid, as a child, you've been molested, you've been raped, you've been abused, I cancel that spirit of your life, amen, and the trauma, I close those doors, the fragmented part of your spirit, I cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I come against those spirits that have been fighting against your destiny, I break his power in Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen and amen, and so we want to quit early today, I mean, I'm over time by now, and so I just want to ask you guys, uh, so... We had a busy time in service on um, not this Saturday, but last week Saturday. Uh, many people were set free. God had moved tremendously. And we just thank God for what He's doing. And we, we, we want to stay covered. We want to stay, uh, uh, you know, under the 
and then have Lord, do we want to you know make sure that we don't uh, move out of time? We want to move in time. We want to we want to be a man of God who know the times and the season, even as the sons of Issachar knew the times and the season. Amen. And the whole nation of Israel bowed to them because they knew the timing of God. And so we're moving in the time of God. We're moving in the glory of God. We're moving in the wisdom of God. Amen. And so the season is the time for us to stay in the things of God. Amen. And though the battle raged, though we are being bombarded, even the mental battles, even the battles in our mind. Stay with God, amen. Stay with the Lord because the Lord has a plan, amen. And the Lord will leave you not forsake you, amen. And so we just give God glory for you. We give God glory for what He's doing. We give God glory for all who came in. I'm just so blessed that you will come in. I bless God for you, Stacy. I bless God for you, Gurley. I bless God for you, Maureen. I thank God for all of you tonight. And I just say, uh, 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 may the Lord continue to perfect those things concerning you. Amen. May the Lord continue to give you revelation in the things of God. Amen. And so God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I will see you probably on Tuesday in the Word of the Lord on Cool 96 at 2 o'clock. God's willing. God bless you. God bless you. And good night. Good night. Amen.